How y'all doing, everybody? Happy Friday, and welcome to The Wan Show. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you guys today. See, I told you guys I was going to do it. Yep. Lots of great topics. More trouble for Intel Arc as board partners reportedly bail on the project. That's uh, <clears throat> a little awkward. In other news, <laughs> Amazon apparently wants to buy iRobot for $1.7 billion. Not, not, not the movie. We're talking about like robot vacuum cleaners. They needed some inspiration. Yeah, they wanted, I mean, they wanted to buy the movie. I actually have a lot to say about Amazon buying iRobot. What else we got? Uh, we have uh, NCX Tales from Behind the Counter, which I'm going to throw one in for, which is not from when I worked at NCX, but I'm going to throw a behind the counter tale into the into the pile. Gonna oh, add okay. One there. That I'm going to put this in Luke's that you cryptic don't story. Yeah. That Linus doesn't know. I oh, think. I might okay. have told you at some point. We've had a lot of conversations. Also, uh, other stuff. Um, Europe I'm going to throw is this mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about why. Yeah. What's up, Europe? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Good show. The video is brought to you, the video, the show is brought to you by Short Form. I think that was Squarespace. It went by pretty quick <laughs> and MSI. All right, why don't we jump right into our first topic for right. the day, more trouble for Intel Arc. Oh. It feels like just a few short weeks ago that we had representatives from Intel here on the show telling us that things are going swimmingly for Arc and we should be expecting a launch imminently. Wait, yeah. that that is exactly what happened. Yeah. That yeah. that exact thing I just said. It's, that It's literally a few short weeks. That wasn't weeks a ago. fever dream, right? Nope. Like that was a thing. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, according to Igor's lab, as if all the other rumors of Intel's GPU misadventures haven't been bad enough for Team Blue, it now seems, according to rumors allegedly, that third parties are abandoning ARC. Igor says there are lots of unsold but already produced graphics cards sitting in inventory, likely thanks to the uh, fall of cryptocurrency values and the scramble to keep production high to meet that prior demand. Whew, that is a bad time. Yeah, uh, Anthony writes, which as Linus should know, is a pretty bad time when it comes to tying up your capital. As a result, Intel has been focusing first on OEM partners, but they face a chicken and egg scenario. In order for system integrators and OEM customers to place orders, there must first be a demand for the products to begin with. But since ARC is an unknown quantity. I mean, all we've seen is the small demos that Intel has done. Since Restricted it's unproven, yeah. there is apparently little to no interest from prominent European distributors and dealers. And this was the case long before A380 benchmarks reared their ugly head. There's another was angle. Still, that, was a, that was still a weird way to launch it, considering it's it's basically always been Halo product and then dropping down from there. And they did like the opposite, which I think- AMD pulled it the other way once when they launched, I think it was Polaris, I want to say. Okay. Mind you, I don't think they had a high-end product yeah. for that generation, like at all. So maybe they were just pitching it as, no, no, they launched, because they did 474, no, they launched the whole stack. They just didn't have a high-end product. I remember now. Nope, nope, never mind. Yep, you're right. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. So I, I, I think that, that set people off on a weird foot as well. You generally try to put your, your best foot forward when it comes to launching a generation of products. Now, there's another angle here. Intel allegedly didn't want to give price guarantees, and the conditions around RMA returns were worse than their competitors, which is a tough pill to swallow for system integrators whose margins at least on desktop computers, are often low. You know what I want to know? I want to know where these RMA conditions for returns are coming from. Because back at NCIX, we couldn't return jack shit. When we bought something, it was ours. <laughs> How did we get hosed so hard? Is it because we were Canadian? <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> a pretty good joke though. okay to be clear we did occasionally get stock point. rotation and price protection but once once you committed to having something you, you pretty much you pretty much had it 
If I was Intel, though, I would recognize that I'm going to have to offer price protection of some sort for these Arc GPUs because if I was a reseller, I mean, I remember going through this back when we did the original WAN hoodie and our strategy for international sales was working through resellers. And we basically had to bend over in order to get the thing in stock in the store because they were sitting there going, well, if we don't sell it, then we want this to be entirely your problem. We want you to cover shipping back to you, take back the entire thing for the entire the entire value. And because we were just you know, small and had absolutely no leverage whatsoever, we pretty much had to take whatever offer was given to us. So uh, <laughs> hilariously, um, we had, I think, three partners, I want to say. It was either two or three. I, I can't remember. remember. It's been a long time. I think we had three partners, though, and the only one that didn't manage to sell through and that we did end up taking inventory back from was NCIX. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> they weren't even the ones that gave me a really hard time about terms. I just told them, like, just look, look, just don't worry. We'll get it taken care of. And then they just, like, didn't sell it. They, I mean, that's NCIX, right? And just, yeah, if your product sells itself, then great. It'll be fine. And if it doesn't, if they have to actually do any work, then it could be a challenge. Their uh, site was so bad, man. It was atrocious, yeah. Anyway, without interest from commercial customers then, board partners are kind of left out in the cold. I mean, man, if you guys have been following along with the screwdriver and the backpack saga, I mean, these are relatively uncomplicated products compared to, well, first you've got this to this highly complex integrated circuit, right? You've got you've got this ASIC, right? Then you've got the highly complex board designs, uh, the development that goes on around those, the mass production that has to happen in order to reach the kind of scale that it even makes any sense economically to produce these things. Then there's the distribution. You got to kind of you got to kind of bet, move all your pieces into play uh, globally. You got to bet on where people are going to buy these things and and which ones they're going to buy and what volumes. Like it's, it's so it's so complicated, and all of this has to take place in the in the years and then months and then weeks leading up to actually pressing go. This is available, and it's all got to be basically perfect or you end up looking like an amateur right because you're going up against amd and nvidia who've been doing this for decades yeah so without interest from commercial customers board partners are left out in the cold and one has allegedly halted production altogether and this is due to quality concerns Ooh. whether these rumors are true or not they are emblematic of the challenges faced by anyone attempting to enter the gpu market in this day and age Without a clear value proposition or brand recognition, SIs are going to have a tough time accepting it. Without SIs accepting it, board partners are less likely to hop on board. And without performance leadership or aggressive back-end agreements on pricing, especially price protection, um, not to mention RMA support, neither situation is likely to change. So the cycle continues until either Intel blinks or the proverbial plug gets Pull. Now, we do have some discussion questions here, and I don't like this first one. Is ARC going to be another Larrabee? I don't, I don't think that's a realistic outcome at this point. Like, I, I think, I do think Intel is a smart enough company to not go completely sunk cost fallacy. Well, we've already put billions in. What's another few billion? But it is very clear from a strategic standpoint that having a GPU play is what the A players do today. You must have, in addition to your x86 compute product, you must have a GPU compute product. And it's also clear from AMD and Nvidia's strategy that in order to hit the kind of volumes that you need, you want a consumer product. You don't just want it to be a data center compute product, which is ultimately where Larrabee ended up, if I recall correctly. Yeah. So I don't see it happening. I think Intel has to go down this path, even if it's like beating their heads against a wall in order to get there, even if it takes another three years. I think it's I think it sucks. I don't remember the exact problem. There was there was some type of problem which is causing a lot of these performance issues. We talked about it last week. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think that's like really unfortunate, especially considering that you would kind of hope that with the pedigree that they brought on board that they would they would have been able to avoid something like that. But it is extremely technical concepts and it's not like they can exactly just copy paste what these guys have done in the past. Yeah, uh, I don't think be, if like, Roger Kaduri like yeah. just recreated 
Yeah, that would be a big problem. So you can't exactly do that. So you're going to run into some issues. It's unfortunate, but I do agree with with Linus. I think they're going to try to make it work. Um, I hope. I hope they're going to try to make it work. I hope you're right. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, there's another discussion question here, courtesy of Anthony. Gamers probably share the concerns around pricing, RMA, and driver support that system integrators do. How will this impact the role of early adopters? I think early adopters are absolutely critical to ARC. And, you know, from talking to Shrout and Tap about it, they seem to understand that they're going to have to be priced very aggressively to drive some of that early adoption. But if they don't have the buy-in from upper management, if they don't have, you know, tens, hundreds of millions, a billion bucks to just kind of get some ARC GP freaking use out there into users' do they, hands. Do they even really want to if it has a lot of issues with this generation? I, I think I mean, if... they produce them, allegedly. Yeah. Supposedly, yeah. they just have wafers upon wafers upon wafers of ARC GPUs. Then they're going to have to make them incredibly cheap if there is problems. Yeah, you, you don't just grind them up and make new GPUs. Although... <laughs> the biggest recycling effort ever yeah um, exactly don't bury it in the desert like uh the et video game yeah, actually exactly. grind them up and make new ones um <clears throat> yeah i uh, we'll see I, I there was a comment earlier about like no brand recognition i don't think that's fair at all um no. because it's gonna have intel on it and, and, and people that are building computers know who intel is and intel's onboard graphics to their credit, have gotten a lot yeah. better in the last five years. I mean, I, I, continually, they've gotten continuously better ever since they introduced them back. Uh, well, I shouldn't say introduced yeah. them, but okay. Sorry, Jaden just said something in full plane chat. If they allow vGPU, they'll move them. Yeah, there's there's absolutely a hundred percent strategic levers they can pull. And Epos Vox did a video recently talking about their AV1 encoder. I haven't watched the video yet. I do need to watch it, but I did at least make it to the headline. Apparently, it's outstanding. Like it is, it is a better video encoder. So as long as OBS gets support for Intel's AV1 encoder, streamer I could see cards. a bunch of streamers just throwing it in in addition yeah. to their NVIDIA GPU, just so that they have AV1 encoding. That would actually be pretty cool because then you can lift a lot of the. It hasn't really been worth it to have like uh, a dedicated Nvent card. But, it, I mean, it could be if it's, like, actually really killer. Yeah, if it's legitimately that. better. I mean, yeah. remember, too, we're talking about people that will build an entire separate machine so that they can use CPU encoding for the best possible quality. If AV1 meant you just don't have to do that, although there are other reasons to use a separate machine, like if your game crashes, it means your stream doesn't crash, et cetera, et cetera. Stream stability stuff, yeah. But if money is no object, or if maybe it's the money is a partial object at that, that tier, if just adding one of these ARC cards for you know, 130, 140 bucks, getting that AV1 encoding means that your stream will just immediately look sharper, look better. I could absolutely see people doing That'd that. Sick. Yeah, if they do, if that's genuinely really good and they have vGPU support, they'll move them. 100% they'll move them. I, there's a comment from, from Anthony saying, uh, regarding brand recognition, it's more about the Intel HD graphics being poor performers and people generally seeing Intel graphics as low and bare bones. That's fair, but I do also think that Intel is like a, a household name that people trust. Um, and like maybe if you're if you're very technical and you've like messed around with the Intel HD graphics a bunch and stuff like that, um, then you have that opinion. But if you're just someone who like you like building your own computers, you build one every like three four years, and you've had Intel chips since you were fairly young, like I think it's gonna hit for those people. Um, and then on the other end, like we've just been saying now, there might be specific scenarios where with the highly technical people, it, it just it slays. And, and like i don't know i we try to tell them here and i'm gonna try to tell them again you'll solve i in my opinion you'll solve your problems if you enable vgpu one of the issues with that is it's going to be hard to take it back with, oh yeah with battle mage or whatever the ones oh, are after it'd that. be really hard oh yeah so you know <laughs> i think you shouldn't to be fair i think you should just send it out there and just leave it out there and just um you know, drop it on the table. Be like, hey, we're actually doing it. We might have cards that have issues, but we have this enabled. People are going to buy it. And if the competition doesn't answer to this, we'll just take our piece of the pie and run with it. But I don't know. 
All right, let's jump into a couple of merch messages very, very early on because naturally the big news for us this week was we finally, finally launched the LTT backpack. Woo! Thank you. Massive shout out to everyone who ordered one. It's hilarious. Everyone who watched the video internally is like, hey, when are the... uh, when are the staff ones going out? And I'm like, oh, not soon. The, okay. The, <laughs> They're going to paying customers first, guys. There was people from Floatplane that asked if we're getting like backpacks and screwdrivers. And I was like, I seriously doubt it. Because I did the math and I was like, <laughs> and then you sent that message and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I guess so. We're going to, we're going to do it, but it's going <laughs> to, it's going to take some time. It's going to yeah. take some time. Yeah. We got to. Stock needs to stabilize, stuff like that. Anyway, we can do a couple of merch messages now. Uh, if you guys want to send in a merch message anytime we're live, when you're checking out on lttstore.com, you can check that you want to send a merch message, enter your merch message. It'll either pop up down here. It's our replacement for like super chats or, or bits on Twitch or anything like that. Because this way, instead of just throwing money into a void, you can throw it into a void and the void will spit out a high quality t-shirt or backpack or or hoodie or whatever else it is that you happen to need and it'll arrive at your door eventually depending on depending on where you are all right hit me bell from jack been following the backpack for a while and loved the unboxing on short circuit hey thanks with the thought of other ltt products working with the backpack do you expect to release products that directly work with the backpack such as hooks or lockers or carabiners or we had people ask about rain covers okay so i've uh, i've seen quite a few requests for a rain cover if we can find something that folds up compactly enough that it could fit in the hidden passport pocket I would love to have a rain cover that kind of sits in there and then you can pull it out in an emergency. So you so you swap the luggage strap for that is basically what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. There wouldn't be a place for your luggage strap at that point, but like just store it somewhere. Whatever. It can't hold everything. Yeah. Um I'd absolutely love to do a rain cover. We are already working on some attachments for the front. Oop, the front. I think I this just front. saw a secret thing. Yeah. We are already working on some attachments for the front for things like, uh, oh man, Matthew has this adorable little uh, like wireless headphones holder that will clip on right here. So it'll just sit right here. So you can just tuck your wireless headphones in. It's big enough for AirPods Pros in a case or like a large bulky one like the Sennheisers. And th this will probably be one of those things where like it fits best on this backpack. But, oh yeah. But it'll work on anything that has like a... We definitely want to keep our accessories um, generic in terms of their compatibility with other bags if we can. The last thing you want to do is make something that then is married to... I mean, okay, e even if I think these things are going to last you 10 years, they're not invincible. So if you'd be able to carry on, you know, some of the accessories to uh, a future bag, then great. Like that's... Even if it's a future bag that we potentially make. Yeah, whether it's us or whether it's someone else. Like, Or I, if you find a use for it that isn't even a bag. So that's something we're working on. Uh, another cool one is uh, this. We recognize that oh. not everyone right. is necessarily going to prefer just that 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 compartment of holding um as i as i like to call it the the just uninterrupted you know place to stuff everything so this is an accessory that we are currently working on that's going to be called the tech pouch it's built to the same standard of quality as the backpack which means you know we've got entirely unnecessary like reinforced stitching on the handle on the end it uses waterproof zippers even though like <laughs> come on <laughs> get, get real this has to be rainproof um but it does anyway and then this is really cool so it opens oh. up into like an accordion style uh thing that is just chock full of dan are you trying to do something here should i be switching to that camera is that should i be switching to the loop cam yeah here you go so it's got like you know, a little spot for pens. You know, we only have one spot for a pen, like a native spot for a pen in the in the backpack as it is. Uh, this is an this is an earlier version. We actually already have a newer version than this one that has changed this to either two medium sized ones or one big and one small. I can't remember, but I I just found th this th uh, three by small configuration was not that useful. I need to take my uh, uh, you know what? No, it's fine. I'll just leave that in there for now. That is an old school flash drive. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, there's these are supposed to be um, uh, knitted, 
So when they're knitted, these are going to be stretchy. And then this is supposed to be elastic at the top. So there's like a stretchy thing here. And then you can uh, also undo the zipper here. There's like a zipper thing. Basically, you can just kind of like cram it with whatever you want. Uh, there's another thing of like, uh, so this would also be, I forget, one side's going to be stretchy and one side's not. Because when you fill up the stretchy side, we want it to bulge out. And when you fill out the not stretchy side, we want it to bulge in so that you can still fit. Uh, the spacing of this uh, elastic here has been changed so that you can kind of put tools in it or you could put like thumb drives in it. You can kind of put whatever you want in it. And then it'll also be tighter because right now it's a little loose. So once it wears out a bit, it's going to have a hard time holding things in place. But this is basically exactly the width of the bottom of the, the, the chamber of holding, pouch of holding or whatever. And it'll be it'll just kind of sit there. And then the idea is that because it's made of that same sturdy reprieve fabric, you just kind of roll up, put it on your desk, and it just stands on its own. You can get whatever you need, put all your stuff back away, whether it's like tools or you know USB drives or, or your testers or whatever it is that you're that you're using, and then you tuck it away. So that's that's something. That's something. Cool. Um, you could also use it for toiletries and stuff like that. Yeah, people have have clued in that. Yeah, it could also be great for travel. So we're working on that. When when is? No idea. Okay. Yep. Can't promise anything. Sounds. I shouldn't good. even be showing it to you. <laughs> I I was wondering when you put it over there. I was like, uh, I've never seen this before or heard of it. Yeah. So. It'll absolutely work standalone, but it's kind of made to to sit in. Well, that's the yeah. That's just that's a good idea to do everything that way, right? Like you could use it without it. You you don't even have to use that with a bag, technically. Like you said, it could just be like a travel thing. Yeah, like exactly. Whatever. Have it in the car. Question is from Brian. Could the lab possibly do USB hub reviews? Every one I've purchased has been terrible. I think that's a fantastic idea. I don't even know where we'd begin. I mean, obviously, you'd want to know how how hot it gets when you're pulling the maximum amount of power that it can support. You'd want to know what its internal inefficiencies are. So if you could test how much power you could draw with a device that's actually plugged in on the other side of it, uh, you'd, want to, you'd want to create some kind of like a torture test, right? Where you have you know data streaming over, like let's say it was a USB-C hub, right? Mm -hmm. that has HDMI and uh, also you know USB type A's or something. So if you have some kind of data storm going on over the USB ports, does the HDMI cut out? You know, I'd want to know things like that. Yeah. That is a good question because that's one of those types of things where like if you go on like Amazon or whatever and you want to buy one, there's just like a billion of them and it's just, uh, how are you supposed to know? The the brand recognition isn't going to be there. It's from like 30,000 brands you've never heard of. Um yeah, yeah, I don't know. That would be one of the things that I would I would like there to be some some kind of like answers for. That'd yeah, cool. if we could find a way, I'd 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 love to. Cause it's man, I get so frustrated. I get so frustrated. I, we went through this with dash cams recently. We actually have a video coming where we bought every hundred dollar and under high like the top uh, hundred dollar and under dash cams on Amazon, because I just I, I went on the site. I'm like I I don't understand. The, uh, most of these reviews are obviously fake, um, but they, they all are rated pretty well. And even some of the genu real users seem to say, like, it's really good. So why would why do $300 dash cams exist if there are $70 dash cams? Yeah. Like, it was just, it was overwhelming. Even as a, as a tech-savvy person, it was absolutely overwhelming. So I kind of went, well, conveniently, I'm in a position where I can commission my own independent test I need a freaking dash cam. Uh, you, buy all the dash cams, and then let's share our findings with the people. So that video is coming pretty soon. But <laughs> That's USB actually cool. I will, I will genuinely very likely buy one based off that video. That's the type of things that I like, where, like, to be completely honest, uh, they're almost more interesting to me than computer stuff reviews. Because at this point, I can often, like, suss out what I need to know about yeah. computer hardware. But when it goes into something like dash cams, like USB hubs, stuff like that, I'm just like, I don't know. Even something There's like a thumb drive. Yeah. Okay, okay, I still need a thumb drive for whatever reason. I got to carry around a lot of ISOs. They're Who useful. knows? Whatever. Uh, 
how, how do you know if it's good? Which one? Which one's good? Yeah. Cables. Yeah, that's cool. Man, cables, cables are gonna be huge. That's oh. that's gonna be the main like tertiary product thing. That's I'm I'm very excited about about the cables. Oh, yeah. the ones that we're planning to make or the testing? The testing mostly, to be completely honest. Yep. That's but then fine. I'm hoping that the ones that we make are like some of the best ones that come through testing, right? So like, I should hope so. If they're not, then we suck and we need to start over. Yeah. See, this is this is hilarious. Uh Scally over in Twitch chat says Garmin makes decent dash cams. No, they don't. See, I would have thought that too. Garmin's like a, a brand name, right? Like they're they're a trusted name. They made like that is, GPSs that is a or direction whatever. that I would likely go in. Exactly. And instead, no, it turned out it just cost another ten, twenty dollars and was not better at all. Alrighty then. Great. <laughs> now I know, but I didn't. And it's so hard to tell because your intuition might tell you this, but then when you go empirically test it and you go, Oh yeah, I, I can't see jack at night. Oh great. Well, it's good to it's really good to know, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, for sure. Oh, well, really? This everyone's using sensor everyone's using one of the same two Chinese chipsets. Oh, all right then. That's interesting. That's very interesting. And that's not something that you're going to be able to easily figure out in any other way. No, no, not at all. You're gonna you're gonna tear down some uh, some fanboy fences with that one. I think there's already people charming it like ah the, the anchor ah Garmin whatever, and it's like hmm we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Cobra. The... Related to that, uh, Aya asked if there's any plans for the labs to release a spreadsheet list or ranking chart for the products you test, whether it's paid or free. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We still, I still have to sit down with a lot of people from labs that that have experience at um, um, related um, uh, websites uh, and, and figure out exactly what we're going to do because we've been waiting to get development on staff, but um, there was paperwork signed yesterday. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, Done deal. Love to hear it. So very soon, it'll technically be before that person actually starts, but I want to get these meetings started anyways, and, and he's volunteered. So we're going to have a call just to go over some of the road mapping stuff cool. before he actually starts so that we can start doing design so that we can start hitting it hard right when he's actually full full time can i tell you something wild sorry hold hold that thought i want to hear the rest of that that what you're about to say thing you manage a larger team now than i did when we moved into this building nice and there's a lot more coming <laughs> by the way if you just heard that yeah contract buy backpacks thing, Sorry, if you, if you, <laughs> yeah fair uh if you just heard that back that uh that contract thing you're like what i didn't get it i'm still I'm still working on it i need a few of you guys not just one so yeah in summary yes our intention in the longer i mean screw it should i just should i just bring up the doc no 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 no, no, I'm serious. Do not. There are things on there we're not showing. No. I'm Close getting, it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm getting serious. A, I'm getting a maybe vibe. I will, I will switch I'm off. Getting... I will switch the camera off his screen. I'm getting a maybe vibe. I'm getting a maybe vibe. No. What do you What do you think? Should... Okay, can I at least can I at least talk about MVP? Yes. Okay, I'll tell you what. Why don't no. you talk about MVP? Okay. okay. I thought you were going to say, why don't I just show that part of the screen? Yeah, why don't I just show that uh, no! part? No! <laughs> the MVP. <laughs> the chat screaming, do it. Oh, my no. goodness. Is someone calling me to prevent this? Line is speaking. I don't know what this is. Nope, definitely name. spam. Definitely okay. spam. Okay. That's a hilarious just, spam call. Very it started with, time. yo. We're all out of vaccines. And then I hung up because it was obviously very stupid. <laughs> um, I was going to say, MVP is, is, is minimal, minimally viable product. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, it's, it's not technically 100% locked down. The general features are, which is what's on that sheet, but exactly yeah. what the site will actually look like is not 100% locked down. Okay. Uh, we still have to nail that in. But so, it's... so you want me to read it or do I need to share this with you? Or Don't like... share it with me. Okay, I'm not going to share it with um, you. It's, it's mostly, I, I actually might have to see it. Yeah, you can, there you go. 
Yeah, it's essentially like a the the MVP. To be completely honest, is essentially like a really fancy blog, um, because that's I mean that's what it is, right? You're you're reading, so there will be there will be reviews. We're going to try to make sure that the the search is very strong. Um, the the fuzziness of the search is very good, um, so you can find things that you're looking for. That's there's all going to be categorized to some degree. We want to be able um, to uh, generate and display graphs and tables, obviously, yep, which already sort of works. It just needs to work on the website yep. as well. We can't be painstakingly, you know, graphing things and making tables by hand like we do on the video production side of things. And yeah, they might not be as pretty, but they need to be fast. <laughs> I, I'm going to be taking in goals and desires from a lot of different people on the on the technical side of labs so we can figure out what they want on the website. One I can tell of... you one of the really wild things they want. Um, I, I uh, had a chat with Gary recently, or someone did. Somehow this, this floated back to me. And apparently the target maximum throughput for headphone testing is 50 a month. Oh, yeah. So hopefully you guys are ready to store a lot of data. Well, that's yeah, that's and, and graph it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just mean like that's a freaking lot of headphones. Yeah, that's fine. Like, what are there even that many headphones? Like I think you're gonna run out of headphones. Yeah, I think we're gonna run out of headphones <laughs> before we run out of testing throughput. Yeah. Anyway. Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, but so one one of my th two okay two core concepts that I'm gonna try to champion. One of them is that it needs to not be like overwhelming and intimidating when you land on the website. Yeah. Um, and when you're looking through the website, to be honest, there should be deep, hardcore information, but it should feel accessible. Um, it, it should, you shouldn't hit land on the website and be like, oh my goodness, this looks like a UI from the 90s. We're going to trick like you into thinking you can handle everywhere. this data. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. But like, actually though, we want to yeah. make it a comfortable experience to dive really deeply into something, um, to encourage people to actually take that extra step. So that's one of my things. The other one is I want the CMS to be really strong. Um, the CMS is actually extremely important because I don't want someone to have to spend their whole freaking day building uh these articles because they because I, I don't know if we're writing individual articles for each one of those 50 headphones that we're testing a month um what's all this no no you're good you're good um so the cms has to be pretty strong if we're if we're building a little thing like a graph or whatever it should yeah. be very easy to add that not labor intensive as few clicks as possible that type of stuff. So there's going to be a lot of work in, in that regard. We want to have product browsing by category, by tags, uh, by search. We want to have pictures and videos embedded. We obviously want to have affiliate links working because they got to pay for this. Um, it's so expensive. Yeah. Uh, we shot a video this week. Oh, man. I'm excited for you guys to see this thing. Have you seen the PSU tester we bought? I have heard that it was purchased. I have not seen it. It's here. Oh boy. It arrived on, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday, and we did our unboxing video, which is an uncrating because it's taller than you are. Mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. It's an entire 40U cabinet. Uh huh. Uh huh. Full okay. of AC load generation, DC load generation, oscilloscopes. Um, uh, loads themselves, so you, you need like the you need the power supply, and then you also need the loads, uh, logging, uh, like monitoring and logging uh, hardware. It's 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 packed. It is stuffed to the gills. It's apparently a better one than Seasonic has. Oof. Yeah, and they're an actual Seasonic power supply manufacturer. Yeah, like a lot of your favorite power supplies are probably once you go down to it, Seasonic. Um, Xpure asks, bigger than the one Gamers Nexus got? Yeah, definitely. It's big. We go big or we go home. It's good we had the land when we did, because you guys are going to fill that space up pretty quick. Pretty quick stuff. Considering style. the anechoic chamber was just like leaning against the wall the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I had to point that out to a couple people because I guess when it's deconstructed, people don't necessarily recognize what it is. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was pretty that was pretty crazy. Here, I can I'll show you uh, I'll show you the company that we got it from. There has been a lot of mentions about getting Electra Boom to come check out the uh, space once it's set up. Yeah, I mean, sure, I'm I'm down for whatever. So yeah, it's basically like one of these. So they're highly configurable. Kyle actually. Uh, 
went through a whole, did a whole bunch of research working with uh, Seasonic and I believe, you know, I'm not sure who else he talked to, so I'm not going to name anyone else, but working with Seasonic as well as engineers from Chroma to ensure that we have exactly what we need for the ultimate the ultimate configuration for testing PC power supplies, because they make gear for testing all kinds of stuff, batteries, uh, any kind of power system. And the only piece that we don't have yet, the only piece that was not included in our 133,000 US dollars was an oscilloscope. So once we get the scope in the front of it, it's that price tag goes, whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> goes up a little bit, goes oh, up boy. a little bit. Oh boy. Uh, no, we're not going to be blowing any breakers. The plug on it's like this big. <laughs> it's got its own special plug. There's a lot of power in that building. Yeah. Oh, there's tons of power in that building. I mean, we ran like a 200 plus person LAN in there. And it was like, no problem. Whatever, you know, yeah. no problem. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's crazy. Yeah, I can't wait, man. We're going to be able to churn through. Like, the capability, the capabilities of this thing are so cool the ac the ac power source for example you can get it to run automated scenarios for things like okay uh what's it like if you're on you know a really crappy uh setup and someone like flicks on a blender somewhere else in the house so you can find out you know hey if i Crazy. if i live some if i you know in a developing country and my power is really inconsistent and Crazy there's brownouts frequent brownouts yeah so you can you can create all these test scenarios where it'll it'll simulate a brownout here and then another brownout there and then uh you know uh, uh, a really a really um oh, i'm trying to remember what the problem is certain types of motors though when they spin up, they can cause problems for other devices that are on the same circuit so you can have those spin up um the dc oh man this is super cool so the we have a we have like a dc uh power source and the reason for that is that it allows us to fake our power supply accidentally oversupply like overvolting so we can we can take whatever our power supply is outputting and we can actually <clears throat> add a little bit to make sure that over voltage protection works for example so we're going to be able to test uh safety mechanisms in power supplies if there's anything that's not safe we can hook it up run through our automated test suite and it'll tell us that uh, we're going to build a chamber for it that will be both uh acoustically isolated and thermally isolated so we'll be able to tell you okay under different load scenarios how loud is it going to get uh, how hot is it going to, how, uh, how efficient is it going to be if it's in a particularly hot environment as the <clears throat> world heats up? I guess that could become more and more of a concern for people. And uh, this one's really cool. We have, I think it was, it's either six or seven of the 400 watt loads. And the reason that we got so many was actually not because we needed that much sustained load, but because of the their like transient performance. So by having that many in parallel, we are able to simulate the effect of like an RTX 3090 having a momentary power yeah. draw spike. Yeah. Now, Nvidia might have kind of kind of screwed us here with some even higher power draw GPUs coming. Oh yeah. Uh, but I mean, we won't know that for sure until it actually happens. So we might actually have to get more of those modules to there was a comment account for in, that. There's a comment in Flowplane chat about hoping that we don't um, like squeeze Steve out. That's, that's squeeze Steve not, out. Not going to happen. What, no, you need multiple I independent was just sources. Just say so. If if anything, uh, it, it should bolster because then people are going to be looking for that type of content more. Exactly. We're um, bringing it back. Yeah, I'm bringing it back, it's and like we have dead. literally always said um, that you should look at multiple reviews for products that you're buying. So, like, no, that's that's not happening. Not a thing. I mean, another thing too is that yeah, this is uh, pointed out by Daffoid over on uh, in the float plane chat is we don't intend to just focus on PC components. That too. I mean, one of our first hires has a ton of experience in mobile phone testing. Uh, so that's, I mean, that's not something Steve touches as far as I can tell at all. In fact, doesn't he still use like a dumb phone or something? I, I don't know. I, I know he, last time I talked to him, he used like ancient, ancient phone. 
I just don't think he cares about it at all. So so we are we are absolutely going to be looking at different verticals. Yeah. And we also think that even for the things we both cover, there is and yeah, a lot of situations, validity to more than one yes. testing methodology yeah. too. So, you know, maybe maybe one of us uh, you know, tests coolers with an artificial load. Maybe one of us is all about, you know, embedding a thermal diode in the IHS. Maybe yeah, you know, whatever, right? Like, and to be clear, that's a bad example because obviously we would both care about it from both perspectives. But I just mean that there is not always the one and only single way to test something. I mean, okay, games. Games are a really good example. Maybe, you know, we really feel like, yeah, our audience it has moved past 1080p. So we're really focused on how good cards are for 1440p and up. You know, that that could be something that could realistically happen in the next or if two start, to five years. Or if we start automating the, if we start automating custom benches instead of, uh, or custom runs instead of just running the the canned benchmarks or something like that. I don't know. More more sources is good. You should, you should read slash watch both. Yes. And we've literally always said that. So, yeah. One note for people who are thinking about the backpack, we do have a promo on right now for the WAN hoodie, oh, the hoodie and yeah. backpack. Yeah. So if you get a WAN hoodie and a backpack at the same time, you save $20. And that's only valid until tomorrow evening. So no pressure, but uh, you should do it. Question here from Nathan for Luke and Linus. What is your favorite piece of freeware or open source utility software? Like Ninite or something else? Favorite piece of freeware. I mean, we're streaming on OBS I was right now. Say, I think it sort of has to be OBS. Well, I wouldn't say favorite. I don't have an emotional attachment to OBS. There's a lot of stuff that's not that perfect. I imagine it didn't exist. OBS. Uh, I mean, I was I was using I uh, you know Explit. I was using XSplit before and like it had some problems, but. I actually kind of want to try it again, to be perfectly honest with you. See where it's currently Yeah, at. see where it's at. They've sponsored the show a couple of times, and it kind of made me think, oh, yeah, XSplit. I mean, I have a lifetime license for it. I might as well. Maybe I'll do, like, a, a game stream at home or something like that. Fire up XSplit. See how it does. Play some play some uh, Obsidian. When it worked well for me, it worked great. Or Divinity, sorry. Yeah, like, there were things that XSplit did the way better for me The game detection was so sick back in the day. Yes. Yeah. And OBS is, still sucks. We also had a lot of problems with We but did. But that was a long time ago. And the WAN PC had a lot of gremlins. I don't know how much of that was XSplit. That's fair enough. <laughs> like, yeah. honestly. Yeah. So, man, favorite free utilities. I mean, you can't you can't not mention, your, you know, your paint.nets of the world. Paint.net, Notepad++, yeah. Ninite. Winderstat. Um, Back, Putty. Someone said Putty. Yeah, yeah Putty. 7-Zip. Oh, there's so many good ones. VLC. You already said Notepad++, right? Yeah. Okay, heck yeah. Love Notepad++. Uh, I actually... There, I used to do that thing. I think I told you about it way back in the day where you can overwrite all the like... Uh, you can essentially like reg edit Windows. So anytime you even try to open Notepad, it just opens Notepad++. Oh, that's hilarious. I don't remember exactly how it works. So I might have said something wrong there. But it was actually really nice. Because <laughs> you should just never use Notepad. You should use Notepad++. I thought about uh, resurrecting LSD. Remember? Oh, yeah, Luke's yeah. Luke's Software Discoveries? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Chocolatey is apparently a 9 alternative that's like oh. way more powerful, way more customizable. Really? So I thought maybe we'd like check that out. And then... I found something really cool. Oh no, did I misplace the name of it? Chocolatey Software. Okay, I can't find the name of it right now. I have it written down somewhere. But this is so, this blew my mind. There's this utility that lets you turn your USB drive bootable, which I know won't impress you yet, but turn your USB drive bootable so that it just loads like uh, a list of all the ISOs that you've drag and dropped oh, onto cool. that USB. That's cool. So it's like the ultimate utility that's USB. Sweet, actually. I really like so you that. You just throw your, you just literally drag and drop your mem test ISO, your Windows install ISO, and then you just plug this thing in and it just goes, Sh -sh 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 -sh. which one would you like? Da -da -da -da. This one. That reminds me a lot of like. So cool. The. No, it's not Rufus. Ventoy, that's the one. Geek Squad used to have this tool um, that was actually really good. Um, and I don't, I don't remember the name of it, but this was back in the day when every computer had a CD drive. 
So they were on CDs, and you you could like burn the like Geek Squad tool onto these CDs. Yeah. And uh, um, people used to effectively like sell them outside of Geek Squad because they were so good. They were oh, actually really? valuable, and like local repair shops would buy the updated versions of these like Geek Squad CDs that were bootable, and they had. Uh, like mem tests and like all these other types of things on them. Right, they were it was actually just all really arranged good. really nicely. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, it was nice, like in one place. But yeah, Ventoy is what it's called. Super, super cool little tool. Yeah, that's sweet. All right, what else we got? From I think we brought down Ventoy's website. Oh, oh crap. man, <laughs> MRI. Yeah, Geek Squad MRI. That way back in the day. Way, way, way long ago, that used to be really genuinely good. I have no idea if it even exists anymore, uh, but it was awesome back in the day. Yeah. From Aiden, any updates on the big, tall, or women's sizes? Hiram's boot CD, yeah. Uh, no. We're, we've got a lot, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, there's always like, man, it's it's kind of amazing how many projects they have rolling right now for how few people work at Creator Warehouse, relatively speaking. A lot of stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, Geek Squad still uses MRI, and it's still pretty cool. All right, there that's you actually go. good to hear because I know they've like outsourced a lot of their repair and stuff. Like you just plug the computers into a network connection and then people fix them remotely and stuff, which kind of made me really sad. Um, but the fact that MRI is still cool is is pretty sweet. Also, Hiren's boot CD and all that type of stuff. There's lots of cool things. Yeah, I don't know. I'd be super down. From Dominic, hey Linus, I noticed wrist rests for keyboards are super boring. Have you ever thought of creating your own wrist rest in the typical LTT quality and style we all know and love? <laughs> Why you gotta read it like that? <laughs> so far over the top, dude. <laughs> in all seriousness, yeah, we've thought about it, but the way that I see it, the the custom keyboard market is so saturated. There are so many players. There's there's so many boutique wrist rests and keyboards and cables and and all that stuff that I just. I feel like we'd just kind of be adding to the noise at a certain point. And the reason that it's occurred to me to make that product is because my wife is an avid wrist rest user. Uh, she uses a Steel Series 7G, which has that super yeah. long wrist rest on it. And she just basically won't touch any other keyboard because it really is way better. And so if we were going to do one, it would probably be in that long, gently inclined style. And she also uses a wrist rest for her mouse. But I think the mouse one would be more likely just because there are so many options for keyboard wrist rests due to the explosion in enthusiasm for mechanical keyboards and, and super cool keyboards. Uh, a mouse wrist rest, I, I could actually see us exploring because the razor one that she's been using all these years <laughs> it's it's kind of disgusting i was gonna say is it like yeah yeah, it's it's pretty gross at yeah. this point there's there's you maybe just haven't looked in the right spots or or maybe deep enough or whatever but th there's a lot of options for wrist rest um i i have this wooden one right now that's pretty sweet that i got from my mom for christmas um and i like it but it wasn't like sealed super well yeah, I know. I I know it's wearing out. Yeah, so it's just like, dang, because it's it aesthetically is really nice in my opinion, and then For now. it's actually yeah, um, and then it's it's I find it quite comfortable. I actually like that it's just solid wood. I know not everyone would like that, but I I do. Um, but yeah, it's it's like I'm like wearing through it pretty rapidly. Um, so that's the only disappointing part. Now that's an interesting idea. If we were to do a wooden one instead of using a stain like they did, I think I know the one you're talking about. It's kind of reddish, right? Or is that the land? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead yeah. of using a stain, if we used something like a Danish oil, then we could just like, man, I, I bet we could just do like a little, like a little oh, bottle of it included. Kit? Yeah, a little maintenance kit. That actually then be just, sweet. So that because it will wear away a little bit. But when it does, with something like a Danish oil, you just recode it, and it will actually match the surroundings even. Like, it'll still look like new. That would be awesome. That'd be pretty sweet. Okay, maybe we'll do it. I'd be interested in that. I would genuinely, like, yeah. I 
if there was that option and it was advertised as like, look, it looks like this. It will change over time because it's wood and your yeah. hands are on it all the time. Yeah. But you can maintain it. Here's how and we're going to include some. That would have that would have sold me at the time pretty much for sure. Huh. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right. All right. I'll think about it. Cool. Think about it. Yeah. Uh, I did get a message from one of our labs folks. I don't know. Is, uh, is, off is he off probation yet, this particular one? Uh, I think as of like a day or two after the land, yeah. Okay. All right. So, well, do you know that for sure? Not technically 100%. Okay, then I'm not I'm not going to say it just in case. But uh, one of our software developers for the lab says, read the USB hub testing question that came up. Yes, we can. And Gary and I have already had a chat around testing USB power banks, et cetera, as well. Good. That's something that I really want to know. Yep. Because you buy these things, they say however many milliamp hours they are, but we all know that even on something like an iPhone, right? And Apple, for all their faults, does have pretty strict quality control. Even on something like an iPhone, I think is it plus or minus 5%? It's, it's quite a bit. For the battery capacity? Yeah. Like, what do you, what do you, I'm sorry, what do you mean plus or minus 5%? So on something that, you know, might handle a screen on time of, you know, eight, nine hours, you mean my friend might get an extra hour if I get the worst one and they get the best one? That's for ridiculous i also so, i have some battery banks that are still working from like 2013 that i have thrashed and they're still like they have a decent amount of charge like i'm very impressed with some of them and then i have a small army of other battery banks that are essentially like decommissioned because they they've just completely died yeah this is another perfect example of one of those techie product categories that even as someone knowledgeable you can go in and go well i know the reviews are horse I know that the specs are horse shit. So I'm basically just like taking a complete shot in the dark, hoping that I hit something decent. Yeah. And there are brands that have built a reputation over the years. Brands like an Anchor, for example, I expect to be better. Most of my Anchor ones are pretty solid. But, you know, good brands can release a bad product or they can, Intel. sorry? Intel. Or they, or they can turn bad. Right, you can yeah. have a good a brand that starts out good and then leverages that trust that they've built with their audience to start cranking out crap. We've seen certainly seen that time and time again. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm I'm super into that. That sounds great. And then Dad Dude over on Floatplane Chat says, "Hey, and remember too that the milliamp hour rating, even on an honest company spec, is based on the battery capacity, not what it will output at the ports." Yes, that is true. Uh, it also doesn't account for, oh, I guess this is kind of the same thing. So any inefficiencies uh, that yeah, exist within loss, the design yeah. of the bank, any loss, well, there you go. Also, some batteries will actually discharge at a less efficient, in a less efficient manner if they are discharging quickly compared to others. So depending on the chemistry, depending on the quality of that particular battery, if you use slow trickle charging versus fast charging, one or another, could perform dramatically different. Yeah. There's so much. Boy, is there ever a lot to it. Uh, Eternal Salt says, like Pyrex, when that Chinese mega company bought them out. I actually didn't know that Pyrex got bought, and I didn't. I, I don't heard. know if the quality has gotten worse. I, I heard that they got bought out. I have no idea about the quality. Hmm, interesting. Because, I mean, the old school stuff lasts forever. <laughs> yeah, literally so, like, forever. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there, there's some people saying beeswax seals wood really well against like hand oils and stuff. Oh, interesting. Well, that's cool. I'm sure. I'm sure the Greater Warehouse engineer team would would figure out what the best option would be. Too bad there are not going to be any bees. Yeah. Yeah. So that's sad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from Benjamin. Next question. Uh, hello from Germany. Do you think the escalation with China and Taiwan could crash the entire tech industry? Yes. Sure could. Like, yep. immediately. Overnight, sure could. Because basically, TSMC is by far the largest player for chip fabrication. 
uh, particularly advanced chips. Uh, Samsung is is a distant second, if I recall correctly, or is Intel still ahead of them? But that, that then Intel, until they really ramp up their third party fabrication strategy, is not really doing that. As far as I know, they're mostly fabbing their own products as it stands right now. And <laughs> TSMC, um, it's right in the name, is in Taiwan. So looking at the the chip race that's going on right now, you look at the Chips Act in the U.S., you look at the way uh, China has been uh, fighting to get their hands on high-end lithography equipment. Uh, I forget what that like Chinese state-owned basically uh, chip faber is. I, I forget the name, but I think they're doing up to 14 nanometer right now, and they're trying to get their hands on more advanced stuff. Look at the way this this technology arms race is ramping up right now because it's so obvious that next generation weaponry, unless it is AI powered, is going to be utterly useless. Um, and the incentive that China has to just claim Taiwan um, is higher than ever. You know, up until now, it seems like it's been mostly an emotional incentive to claim the island nation, but... That was big industry. Yeah, but now, with what a technological hub Taiwan is, uh, I, I, I can only see it going up. SMIC, that's the one. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Float Plane Chat. They fired missiles over Taiwan, like... A couple of days ago. Yeah, well, there was the whole thing with uh, Nancy Pelosi visiting Taiwan, which I got to say, um, not a huge fan, Nancy Pelosi, but ballsy move. Yeah. I mean, respect for that. Yep. Um, you know, maybe <laughs> a, bit of a bit of a weird move given the, you know, um, profiting that her husband technically, I guess, um, has, sure. has done uh, with like, yeah, through chip stocks and and not definitely not insider trading. Um, you, you'd think they wouldn't want to disrupt the tech industry, but then you know who knows? Maybe they're shorting it now. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Inferno says nobody likes Nancy Pelosi. To be frank, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's 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 fair. Uh, <laughs> Moving on, we got another question from Liam, wondering what your take is on the Hasbro selfie series where you use an app to take pictures of your face then Hasbro sends out and has your face made into a custom action figure head uh well Hasbro selfie series is that is that pulse what's oh hold on I thought I yeah here we go I thought I searched for this what happened create your own custom action figure Choose your location. Uh, Not Canada. <laughs> okay, then. Sure, I'm German today. Mm -hmm. Make room on your and shelf. And it's English, of course. For yourself. Sure, I'll take your cookies. That's actually a really good tagline. <laughs> New Rangers. Look at this. Uh, okay. Boba Fett in disguise. Sorry, what is this? How's my face on this? I think my... you, you need to do the US because the page changed when you did Germany. It might not be available Yeah, there. mine's work. I clicked on US and mine's... Well, I don't know. These are that is definitely not the green and black ranger from the show that I watched. So, well, this has got to be it, right? Maybe there's been a new show. What's the lightning collect? Yeah, but no, these look like the retro uniforms, though. Didn't this is definitely the retro Megazord. Should we show Luke's screen? Yeah, I think you're totally off. Right yeah, now. I think you're totally off. So, this is the Hasbro selfie series, you... not what you were just looking at. This is the tagline that I liked a lot. Make room on your shelf for yourself. I think that's hilarious. Okay, that's pretty good. It's um, pretty classic. Yep. Uh, they have this thing, which is, I guess, trying to represent you getting scanned. Yeah. And then just a stay in you know, stay in the know thing. Nothing really going on. This one of a kind experience will be launching in fall twenty twenty two, exclusively on the Hasbro Pulse mobile app for fans aged sixteen and older. In the U.S. only, so that's yeah, that's why it didn't show. All right, why did they even give me the option to go to Germany then? Who knows? Uh, sign up below for the exclusive selfie series mailing list. Would you do it? Um, would you get an action figure of yourself? I mean, I could see myself just being like, huh, "Well, uh Then again, I don't. I, I don't know. Hard to say. I don't actually buy that much. Huh, well, yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, 
I could definitely see a lot of people doing it though. Oh yeah. Like this is this is next level like genius tier product management. I think if Hasbro really wants to pop off with this, they should let people merchandise them. Oh, like like offer like a bulk rate. You know what? I think the way they're going to be manufacturing these though, they're going to be inherently like low volume. I I don't think it'll there'll even be much of a savings. Yeah, I don't know. I just I just think there's there's creators out there that would want to sell like an action figure of themselves. Hasn't Hasbro already done partnerships like that though? I think so. I don't know. But if they if maybe if they use this to like widen that, that okay. makes sense. Flow plane chat reminds me that I already have multiple 3D printed action figures of myself. Yes, but I don't think this you is made true, those I, for yourself. I didn't buy them for me. Yeah, so that doesn't count. Oh, as a gift though, I could see myself buying someone an action figure of themselves. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I thought you were going to say as a gift, you could see yourself buying them an action figure of you and giving it to them and I was going to be like, whoa. <laughs> I could see him doing that. I could definitely oh, see him doing that. come on. <laughs> Come on! It's like, dang, dude, okay. <laughs> That's brutal. <laughs> no. What yeah. do I think of it? I think they're geniuses. I think as long as they yeah. can make the economics work, they're, they're going to sell so freaking many of these. Yeah, why not? I, I assume they'll start with just faces, and then from there, you'll actually be able to, like, you know, design what you are what you're want to be wearing and all that kind of I stuff. I guarantee you, you're going to see some wedding cakes. Oh yeah, with action figures with the oh, actual faces yeah. on top, um, especially with with the way that like Marvel's been popping off and stuff. The yep. whole like superhero action figure thing is like totally yep, hundred um, percent. And the number of people that right do now. like a Star Wars themed wedding or yep. one that I saw recently because I was I was checking out covers of the um, Romantic Flight uh, song from the soundtrack of How to Train Your Dragon. There are some amazing, amazing covers of it. Um, anyway, I, I saw someone walked, someone uh, had it as they had a live orchestra at their wedding playing how to train your dragon music while they walked up to the Baller. altar. Yeah, no kidding. Right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you know, with that in mind, how realistic would it be to have Astrid and Hiccup with the, with the, he the heads of the bride and groom on top of the cake? Obviously by the time you hire an orchestra, you know, what's a custom figurine from Hasbro? Yeah, 99 can, yeah, 99 easy. Forever, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I could totally see people people manufacturing like landfill like that. It's good. I read a really interesting article recently, actually. I don't think I talked about this on WAN Show. I think I was talking to you about it at some point, though, about oh, how yeah. one of the big industries that is just popping off right now is junk removal. Because millennials have like no space and baby boomers had nothing but space and a compulsive desire to acquire shit. and so as they are downsizing or passing away there's just this there's this mountain this veritable mountain of garbage that the next generation either doesn't want or has absolutely nowhere to put and and this generation of people that are like, yeah, we accumulated this bone china, and I'm sitting here like I was in I was in the thrift store the other day picking up like cheap Archie comics for my kids, and I was like I was looking at all the like the fine china gold leaf stuff. I'm like, who the fuck would want any of this? Like, <laughs> are yeah. you like are you yeah, for yeah. real? This is worth nothing now, right? And this is like a, a prized possession for silent generation or for for your baby boomers out there. Oh, we we won't eat on this because it's like the nice. It sits in the cupboard and never gets taken out until no one wants it. Now, nah, give me some Mel Melmac. Is it called? Uh, is is that what that like super cheap? Yeah, Melmac. Mel yeah, melamine from American cy cyanamid. Here, let's let's check. You, you and I have talked about fast fashion before. Yeah, right? here we go. My here girlfriend go. told me about this website. Give me some Melmac. This is my childhood right here, boys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay. Uh, my girlfriend told me about this website. I'm probably going to pronounce it incorrectly, but Sheen? Sheen? Shine? Sheen? Bell recognizes it. Yeah, I think it's Sheen. Sheen? There's like $8 shirts pants for six bucks oh yeah so like, like there's no way these things last 
beyond like a season. 100%. And like, I don't know. Yeah, it is super cheap. It is super cheap. It definitely has that going for it. And they like look relatively trendy and stuff. Yeah, fast fashion. But brutal. like, whoa. environmental disaster. Oh, yeah. Actually, there's this whole thing. Um, how like the the donated clothes they have too much of it yeah they're just like there's just like mountains of donated clothes i don't have anyone to give it to like okay brutal man there's gotta be stuff that you could just like make out of it like just shred it and like make stuff you know like it can't be that hard can it i think you'd have a lot of inconsistency in like fabric quality and stuff like that yeah, and getting I guess back so. down to like string is going to be basically impossible. Well, no, you wouldn't. You no, know, no, it wouldn't be to get back down to string. You would just like, like I, uh, oh, okay, like for example, that insulation that we have that's made out of uh, recycled blue jeans, where they just yeah, shred so I, jeans and then just like turn it into like blue jean cake that you stuff in your walls. Like, it, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think in like shirts and stuff, it's gonna be more inconsistent though. Yeah, in, no, in I don't denim. think you wouldn't be able to make shirts. Oh, oh, you mean just like the materials in them? I mean, I don't know. Here's a question: If it cost half as much, and there was a chance that from one bat to the next, the performance was gonna be plus or minus, you know, never mind five percent, like we were talking about for batteries. <laughs> I'm talking twenty five percent. Would would you just would you buy would you buy fabric? fabric insulation that's just like <laughs> ah screw right, it some we'll just, shirts. <laughs> yeah it's like i don't know it's made of shirts there's some skirts in there a few buttons <laughs> oh man maybe we gotta find something to do with it um yeah used clothing ends up in in landfills yeah yeah pretty much that's yeah, bad question here from luke hi linus i do cell phone repair <laughs> Probably. That's not really a question, Luke. <laughs> yeah. 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 Got him. What's going on, Luke? Classic Luke. Uh, but I was also curious if when Labs is up and running fully, there'll be any testing of durability of mobile devices or te teardowns like iFixit does. I don't think that we are going to get into either of those. Um, durability testing is not useful on a sample size of one. And quite frankly, it's not even useful on a sample size of 10. We showed back when we toured OnePlus's manufacturing facility that what it takes is specialized equipment, whether it's for drops or whether it's for tumbles, that is run on many, many devices. And they have the luxury of many, many disposable devices to chuck into these things that are not finished quality, right? That might have engineering sample grade SOCs in them, for example, like but they the literally they couldn't sell them. Test is ready to test exactly, or they could make dummy ones that have exactly the same body, and they can investigate it for screen cracking without actually wasting hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of internal hardware on them. Uh, we we just don't we don't have that kind of a luxury, and that's the kind of thing that you know what? Hey, three to five years from now, if the community said we want this. We might even create a system. Actually, this is a really good idea. We should write this down. But we could create a system where our community could, could fund, could specifically fund specific tests. They could say, hey, uh, we want to see we want to see 10 iPhones in a tumble dryer. Um, and then we would have basically build a mechanism where they could we could say like, look, we're not going to, we're, no, we're not paying out of pocket for that. There is, there is no way There's, you're that not we could your return. make up that $10,000 no, worth of close. iPhones on this video or this article or just this data sheet, right? It's not happening. But if you guys really want to see it, then sure. Yeah, we're into it. Uh, we could even see manufacturers potentially funding something like that. Like if you're a, um, ugh, ugh, no, I don't know. That'd be tough. That'd be tough. Like if I'm an OtterBox and I just said, hey, I want independent third-party testing of how well the iPhone holds up to this thing, there's no way that they're going to just write the check and walk away uh, and not expect us to also test OtterBoxes, for example. So that's, man, that's tough. Is that an acceptable thing? As long as they don't interfere with our data and they under and as long as as part of our agreement, we basically say, yeah, you got to understand that once you write the check, we're publishing the data regardless of the yeah. outcome. I don't think it's bad to test order boxes. I could see us doing it for LTT, but I don't think that's something that the lab would just do and publish the data. 
So that's something where LTT oh, yeah. could use the lab. Yeah. I, that's where I would kind of draw the line there. That seems fair. Yeah. Question here from William. Hi, Linus. And one of your... Oh, sorry. No, I'll get to that one sec. As for iFixit, I think they do a great job. I don't think we'd be contributing anything to that particular space at this time. It's Low true. priority. We love iFixit. Uh, from William. Hi, Linus. In one of your at-home videos, I saw a Zuma plush in your kid's playroom. Is Zuma your favorite Paw Patrol pup? Or do you prefer a different one? I can't say that I have a favorite pup, but I can definitely recite the the intro theme song from my kids' watch. Thankfully, they're over Paw Patrol at this point. They're, um, man, what do, what do, they don't really watch much TV lately, actually, now that I think about it. They'll watch Wild Kratts if they're, if they're just like down to... Uh, never even heard of that. Never heard of I've Wild Kratts? I've heard of Paw Patrol, no, but Kratz, not... The Kratz, Kratz brothers. brothers? Yeah. Like Zaboomafu? Oh, okay. Yeah. I know Zaboomafu. Sure. Okay. I don't know what the heck Zaboomafu is, but... Oh, wow. Zaboomafu's legit, dude. Okay. You don't know the good stuff. Well... <laughs> <laughs> uh, this question's from Ryan, but we've had a couple people ask if we had any information about what the backpack's warranty will be now that we've started getting ready to ship out. It's a wonderful question. Right now, we are we're holding firm with we are not formalizing anything, but we will stand behind our products. Um, I think that we have a pretty good. Tracker. I think we have a pretty good track record for just kind of dealing with it. The last thing that I would want to do is create some kind of like legal liability um, for, you know, like, I don't, I don't know what the future holds, right? Like I could die tomorrow and let's say, let's say my, you know, my, my, my muse, my, my, my flame, uh, Yvonne is like, I, I can't do this. Like I can't walk in every day and you know, see Linus all over the place and she's just like, yeah, I, I can't, right? That, that, that's, that's possible and I respect that. Um, so the last thing I want to do is create some kind of, of legal obligation because of some kinds of T, T, some kind of T's and C's that we have created around our, uh, our, our warranty policy, for example. And like, yeah, I guess that does put you guys in a bit of an uncomfortable position, but it's not our intention to go away. It's not our intention to do anything about our current policy of just dealing with it, but um, it's not our primary business making backpacks. And so the last thing I would want to do is hang this albatross around my family's neck um, when they already have other stuff to deal with. So that's where that's where we're at on that. Question here from Chester. Any suggestions for Ethernet cable routing along the inside of brick walls? I mean, other than just running it along the mortar and then using like those, um, using just uh, like plastic drywall anchors, you kind of drill them out, you put in the anchors, you screw it in so they expand, so they, so they grab on. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. If the brick wall is painted, you can paint the cable to match. Um, it's just always going to look pretty bad. Yep. Yeah, painting it to match never fully solves that problem. You briefly mentioned it in the pre-show, and so we got a few people asking if there are any new house updates. Actually, we shot two today. We I was going to say you were. I heard you were at home. Yeah, I I did away with my forty-eight inch monitor. Forty-eight inches. It's pretty big. It's it maybe is too big. <laughs> So uh, I, I tried a yes. couple different options. The Alienware 34-inch ultra-wide with the QD OLED screen. Oh, it looks so good. But then LG also has the C2 42-inch, which also looks almost as good. Oh. And is bigger. bigger. Yeah. But not as big as 48 yeah. inches. Uh -huh. So that one's going to be pretty good. I also, uh, in that video, we update. You know how I changed my microphone? Yeah. So I do that in that video. Got it. Um, what else? What else did we do? Oh, and then we also shot one that's about sort of fun, novel, interesting charging solutions. It doesn't sound very interesting, but I will tell you that within the first ten seconds of the video, you're going to be hooked. Okay. Because I managed to rip uh, a car charger out of the ceiling of my house. And I can't promise that there won't be other shenanigans. We're actually not done shooting that one yet, so I don't know what else oh will happen. Okay. 
we should um we should probably hit the sponsors. Oh, do we have sponsors? Yeah. Are there sponsors for the show? You no, know, maybe not. Uh well, I, I think you I think you called them out at the beginning. I don't even have the right doc open, so I guess you're doing the first one. Thanks to Shortform, our newest sponsor for sponsoring this week's show. Shortform produces super high quality guides to nonfiction books. Their guides are like super powered book summaries. With Shortform, you can learn a book at different stages. For a 10 minute overview, check out check out the one page summary, which goes into extensive detail on what the book covers. Then dive deeper by reading the full guide, chapter by chapter. Each guide will cover the main points and include analysis and smart insights. The book guides also include, inter- include interactive exercises for each chapter to help you apply the ideas that you've learned. Discover new books that you've never heard of uh, about that you've never heard about from a variety of topics such as technology, science, self-improvement, and more. For example, you can learn how to kick bad habits and create good ones with their book guide on Atomic Habits by James Clear. Short Form also publishes new book guides and articles every week, and subscribers can vote on what books they want to see covered. To sum it up, they're basically like book summaries on steroids. Join today and get a free five-day trial and additional 20% off your annual subscription at shortform.com slash LTT. Also, thank you to Squarespace. Thanks, Squarespace, for sponsoring this video. If you're building a brand online in 2022, you should absolutely have a website. I can stand behind that. Um, And if you need a tool to help you build said brand, uh, look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to help expand on your brand online. Make a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything and everything from products to content. We love Squarespace so much, we use it. We, do. Uh, we use it for a few websites, actually, including linusmediagroup.com. Its custom templates make it easy to stand out with a beautiful website that fits your needs. You can maximize your visibility thanks to a suite of integrated SEO features, and their analytic insights help you optimize for performance so you can see what's going well and what needs you know, a little bit of work. So to get started today, head over to squarespace.com slash WAN to get a 10% off your first purchase. Uh, The show is also brought to you by MSI. MSI's back-to-school sale is now on. Are you looking for a new laptop for next semester? Well, they've got those. Or what about a desktop PC that's totally for school and definitely not for gaming, Mom? I swear. Well, they've got you covered there, too. And if you're into building your own PC, they've got components on sale like GPUs, motherboards, cases, and peripherals. MSI is also doing a Gleam giveaway where you don't have to buy their stuff. You can just win it, like a full-blown gaming desktop or an MSI GeForce RTX 3080 Ti Gaming X Trio graphics card. You can learn more about MSI's back-to-school sale and how you can win these prizes at the link down below. Uh, Satir in Floatplane Chat. If you sent in three support tickets and didn't get a reply, uh, the problem, I, I don't, I can't possibly understand how that happened, but they reply to every ticket that they receive. So what you might have to do is um, you can try tweeting uh, at Nick and then maybe just say like, hey, here's my order number, or my ticket number, ideally, ticket number. and then they can go track it down. Nothing is perfect. But if you're if you're not getting a reply from support, eventually, sometimes we do get behind, then something is wrong. That's not how that works. All right, what else we got to talk about today? Should we talk about the uh, sales behind the counter? Or do we save that for another time? Uh, we can save that for another time. I want to talk about Amazon buying iRobot. Okay, yeah, you you have strong opinions about this. Yeah. Uh, my reaction to it was just like, oh, okay, they just moved closer to being an entire country. But yeah, what's what's uh, what's up with yours? Amazon has signed an agreement to purchase iRobot, maker of the Roomba, for $1.7 billion. Almost as much as Twitter loses every year. In specific money talk, it is an all-cash transaction, wow, for $61 a share. No, that's a big deal. That's I, a big deal. No, I know. That's okay. why, it, yeah. Earlier this year, iRobot launched its latest iRobot OS, an AI platform for its vacuums and mops. iRobot OS was designed to separate Roomba from the rest of the vacuums out there. Amazon has not detailed plans for what it intends to do with iRobot. Um, and the big A actually launched their own smart home robot last year called Astro for $1,000. Uh, it could map out floor plans, listen for commands, and recognize faces. Nice it could not clean. So here is kind of... Oh. 
on the surface, you can kind of go, okay, Amazon is buying competent cleaning technology. So that's one thing. But hear me out. What I think is Amazon just wants yet another camera they're in your house. Ma- oh, they're also mapping your house. Yet another sensor array <laughs> that patrols your house and monitors what the heck it is that you're doing and where you're going. And recognize your face. And A vacuum definitely needs to do that. What you like to spend your time on. Yeah. This is brutal. Don't buy it. <laughs> Please. I mean, you can buy it. No. But like... Just know what you're getting yourself into. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. I asked that you don't buy it. Between Ring, Roomba, Astro, and Echo, Amazon will now be able to basically, not basically, literally follow you around and know exactly who you're talking to, about what, and what you're doing anytime you are at home. Isn't that wild? Super cool. Very, very cool. Uh, Yeah, that that was it. That was it. I just wanted to kind of laugh at how Amazon is basically the by and large from Wally. Yeah. At this point. Stop bending over and giving Amazon so much money, please. Thank you. People complain about like all these working conditions and stuff. And they're like, ah, still can't drive to the store. Still going to buy everything off Amazon. Yeah, and then I'll go protest Amazon at the same time yeah. as, as supporting them financially as hard as I possibly can at all points in time. I have it's a like, Prime membership. Come on, guys. I know. I know. But it's so convenient for business. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I've talked about this too much on Wayne's show. People don't like my spicy Amazon takes. It's fine. I get it, guys. Just keep supporting them. Eventually, they'll own your house and your car and you, but that's okay. That's fine. No, no, Tesla will own your buy, car. Buy the vacuum so that they can track your face because that's definitely required. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. <sighs> Anyways, uh, Europeans mad? Oh. We got to tackle it at some point. Yeah, okay. A lot of folks in Europe are mad about the LTT backpack price. Amazon has free shipping. Why does an LTT store? Okay, well, hold on, hold on. Don't don't be condescending. A lot of people don't necessarily... Okay. I know, I was just trying to tie in the, uh, yeah. the Amazon topic. Thank you. For one thing, when we assess tax in the checkout, that's the one time that tax should be assessed. That's not Canadian tax, and then you pay your own country's tax after. If you're getting assessed tax again when the package arrives, you need to take that up with the last mile courier because they are doing it wrong. You already paid the tax. To be clear, I don't think the way that we communicate it is the same way that it is normally communicated. I'm not necessarily saying that we're communicating it poorly or that we're not communicating it, but I think it is uh, abnormal. So when I think when people see it, they're assuming that it is different. Okay. For another thing, so thing number two, the expensive shipping we have, I believe it is capped at either $50 or $60. On average, looking at our order history and the quotes that we got across many couriers, we, we, we really did work hard at this. Um, already our average costs and our average um, amount that we're charging um, are subsidized or well, sorry already the the costs are higher than what we're actually charging we are we are subsidizing backpack shipping to I believe everywhere but Canada and the US who are helping us subsidize the other regions but nominally so yeah, I think we're eating somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to $20 on pretty much everything outside of North America per shipment. There just is not more that I can do at that point. Someone um, in the full plane chat said my shipping was $89, so there is no cap. You probably had other things Did in you your order. more stuff? So that was a judgment call that we made on Backpack, knowing that it wasn't going to be in stock for, I, I believe, Wave 1 ships out September 20th by September 20th. So we made a judgment call because either we were going to have to hold people's entire order until their backpack was ready. And if we did that, we would be able to charge one shipping fee or we were going to ship out everything else on your order and then the backpack separately, which meant that, well, because we were paying for the shipping twice, 
we have to charge the shipping twice. And there wasn't a way with our limited internal systems right now to have that be a toggle option that people could choose. So we made the call because we know no matter how many times we say it, no matter how clearly we say it, there are always a very significant number of people who get confused and frustrated when they order something, even though they know one of the items is going to be delayed, whether it's a custom printed shirt or something like that. There are always people who get confused and angry and message customer service and create a ton of work because they haven't received the other items from their order yet. And so we made the call to ship out everything we have and follow up with the backpacks later. So for the backpack itself, there was a completely separate shipping fee assessed. If there is a legitimate problem and you legitimately did encounter something else, then uh, please do message support. Oh yeah. yeah, there was also the sticker, the sticker controversy. If you ordered a backpack and just free stickers, you got charged shipping for the stickers. We are Six dealing bucks. with that. Yeah, it's, it will it's take being, some time. It's being refunded. It's it's been fixed, so it shouldn't happen anymore. And it's being refunded, so we're we're taking care of it across the board. Um, what I don't fully remember, and I think some other people might be might be interested. What are the complications about setting up distribution from Europe? Do you have to like tax be a company there? Yeah, yeah. So, so that's 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 a lot. That's like it's not trivial. Yeah. Um, and so brutal. aside from aside from just the cost of running a physical location there, uh, the logistical nightmare of splitting our inventory, there is also the um, the the taxation and reporting uh, obligations oh, that come with being now an EU company. We're all of a sudden a multinational. Do you think it's a coincidence that OnePlus started out as having one location, web only, from which they shipped all phones that charged $300 for a phone to becoming a multinational that has support and service centers in multiple countries um, that charges six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a phone. It's not, it's not, there's no free lunch. You have to pay for it somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Aiden, yeah, go for it. But then I'd rather wait. I don't want to pay 2x shipping. I literally yeah. don't know what that means. No, they, they would prefer to have a single shipment. Oh. Yeah, I get it. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have a way to do it either way. So we're we're working on, I mean, we're constantly doing development on our on our Shopify store. It just takes time. It just takes time. And we... Fortunately, thanks to the amazing support that we've gotten from you guys on Backpack, uh, we have some money that we are spending. We are actively spending on hiring developers. I mean, how many are you hiring right now? A lot. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. Um, no more for the store, but um, uh, a huge amount of the effort that's gone into store development for a while. The the person who does that is in Floatplane Chat right now, I think. I saw him in here recently. Um, a, a lot of that effort has gone to a big redesign uh, that we wanted to happen because we wanted to freshen up the site, but also because we need to move on to a new theme um, just because of like, I mean, we don't like own the platform and things are changing and we're moving to the Dawn theme. Um, and that's really good for like a wide range of reasons. Once we are on the Dawn theme, then we'll start being able to get back to features and stuff specifically for the store. But there's been a, a very big effort to get us um, to the new version. Yeah. Aria Lux in Twitch chat asks, have you ever looked into variable pricing based on location? It might ease shipping costs if it appears not too exorbitant. The problem with that is that it will, for the people who live in areas that are very well serviced by couriers or by their, their local postal service, um, it will be a savings. Yep, you're right. Unfortunately, what it will do is it will basically put ordering from LTT store completely out of reach for people in rural areas. It generates, it's, it's just like the situation we're running into now where the people who are fine with the shipping costs will be fine and they'll be quiet. And the people who are upset because they are at the high end of the shipping costs will be absolutely outraged and will bring that outrage online and into our customer support inbox. And 
so what are we what are we supposed to like there there's there's a there's a trade off no matter which way we do it yeah in a in a perfect world i would say yeah sure that makes total sense that people should just pay exactly the amount that the shipping cost, uh, maybe with a slight surcharge so that we have a slush fund for running shipping promos or whatever else. Yeah, I'd say something like that makes a ton of sense. But unfortunately, in the real world, we can't charge, you know, $19 for shipping to Vancouver and $362 for shipping to Iqaluit. Sorry, we, we, we can't. We can't give the middle finger to that customer in a remote region that hard, even though that's how much it costs. I don't know that that exact amount is right, but it is not inconceivable within Canada alone for shipping charges on a product like the backpack to exceed a hundred Canadian dollars easily. So yeah, if you're somewhere where typically you're accustomed to it being cheaper, you're probably subsidizing someone else. Well, we've said that forever to be fair. That is not a. It's not new information. Shipping is really expensive. I'm a flanker. Says one additional warehouse would cover all of Europe and slash shipping times. I know, but you're not listening. <laughs> what it wouldn't do is decrease our overall overhead. Our costs would go up. Our prices would just go up. Once we have a physical location in a region. It gets really complicated. Like we will need a team of people to manage it. Right now, the entire Creator Warehouse team is like 10 people. So what, we're going to go hire another team? Well, you're going to pay for it. Right? So I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. I, there, there's no perfect answer. We would love to do it. What I had wanted to do way back in the day was, um, especially back when Hong Kong was so heavily subsidizing international shipping, like you, you could get a package shipped from Hong Kong for like a dollar. You could buy stuff. Yeah, you could buy stuff on like AliExpress or whatever for like three dollars with free shipping. And you're sitting here going, how does this make any sense whatsoever? Well, it's, it's all state subsidies, right? Um, so what I had wanted to do was find a region like that where there's heavy state subsidies in international shipping and just take advantage of that. But to my knowledge, nobody is really doing that to the same degree anymore. Yeah. And shipping in Canada in general is quite brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Canada, uh, yeah. Even just shipping something like, like you actually mentioned just a minute ago shipping something inside canada not even leaving the borders can be like astronomically expensive no, shipping something from my even house if, to your house would cost me like 20 bucks exactly i was just gonna say yeah. even if you're not going to equal it or whatever like if if, if you're going if you're going <laughs> basically down the street it can still be really expensive hmm um, what it is. And I mean, the, the reality of it is that the backpack launch was a smash success. So, you know, did we get it perfect? Maybe not, but we did get it pretty good. And if if huge shipping costs are a concern for you, but you you know you want to support the channel or whatever else, we do have things that don't weigh as much. Screwdriver is coming really soon. It's a lower cost item and it's a much smaller item. Um, if you're if you're frustrated with how much backpack costs to ship, um, what something that I would recommend that you do if you want to understand it a little better at least is look into the concept of dimensional weight. The backpack itself is not that heavy, but in shipping because their costs are less to do with the actual weight, unless it's air freight, in which case weight matters a lot, uh, but less to do with the actual weight, but more to do with the dimensions of it. Backpack is huge, and it takes up a lot of space on a pallet. And every time a pallet gets moved, there's a cost. So the farther it goes, the more it costs. And the more of the pallet it takes up, the more of the overall cost of moving those goods around has to be borne by that one package. And this this is some assumptions, but I, well, I am assuming. I'm assuming they're correct, but I don't know. Maybe you can correct me. Because I know in the boxes for the backpacks, the backpacks themselves are filled with airbags. They are. Um, it's part to help of that them is keep their shape. Because the reprieve fabric is really like strong, right? And we want it to be in, in good quality and in with the proper shape and holding its form. So all that kind of if stuff. it gets crushed, like really badly, like sits crushed, crumpled, you, uh, you know, it gets delayed in shipping and it sits in a warehouse for six weeks under a giant pile of other stuff. Uh, it could have a hard time bouncing back. Yeah. It is meant to 
it's it is meant, meant to retain shape. yeah because there's shape. a lot of other like purses or backpacks or small bags or whatever you that will just... come flat yeah but they're like like tent material yes it's it's very different so it's not made for that yeah yep that's correct Have you? This is another thing. I think you're just reading comments, so I'm just gonna keep riffing. Sure. Yeah. Um, this is this is another thing that I uh, had thought of recently. Is we, we talk about this gr with graphics cards? How you release the Halo product first? Have you considered releasing a like LTT backpack light? Um, I I hadn't. Uh, I mean, the backpack was built to be the one that I want. Yeah. Which that's what I want. I carry a lot of stuff around, and I. I, I like that <laughs> whether I, well, I, well whether I like it or not that's my life but I have seen so many requests for it that I feel like we'd be morons to not at least explore it I can't guarantee anything right now it's absolutely not something that we have in development at the moment but we had had people ask about it internally and we have had so many people ask about it from our audience that we'd be yeah there's just there's just no way we won't at least explore it Cool. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Want to give us another one, Bell? Sure do. How about a softball? <laughs> yes. Okay, let me pick a different one then. <laughs> Just kidding. This question is from a whale from the LAN event. Oh, hi. Hey. The event was super fun, and I hope we get to focus more on LANs at LTX in the future. That's not a question. Luckily, they followed up with a question. Uh, I wanted to ask one thing about headphone testing at the lab. Oh, sure. Do you have any plans to do frequency response at different volumes versus an equal loudness curve? It's something I've always wondered about frequency response graphs. Interesting. Um, I don't know. That is a tremendous, wonderful question. I don't know that I'll be able to get you an answer back in a, in a convenient way. But what I can do is I can definitely forward that. Actually, I'm going to have Bell forward that to uh, the head of the lab. And that's something that they can at least explore for the creation of our test suites. Uh, thank you for asking. And I'm glad you had fun at the LAN. I, I also had fun. The uh, LAN was awesome. Yeah, I, I, had, a, I had a blast. I, we, should wow, we should probably talk highlights, hey? Yeah, I'd be down. Um, Beating everyone. Beating everyone at Left 4 Dead. I yeah. mean, okay, that was kind of mean, though. <laughs> was it? Like, Bell, Bell, we, we, Bell we was... We told them it was going to happen. Yeah, we, we did. warned them. They all knew. They signed up for that. Yeah, we we basically assembled a team, uh, like a, a crack team <laughs> of Left 4 Dead players. And I got up on the microphone and said, assemble a squad. If anyone can beat us, I will give every member of your team a backpack an early screwdriver hand built by Kyle, head of engineering at Creator Warehouse, and 250 US dollars in store credit at LTT store. So naturally, teams were People assembled. People made the teams, yeah. People signed up for the tournament, and one by one, we absolutely ba -ba -da -ba. crushed them into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even fair. We had Chase, who is just like a mad lad in general. And who is really good at Left 4 Dead. We had Bell, who streamed probably hundreds of hours of Left 4 Dead back in the day. We've got me. I've got 250, 300 hours of Left 4 Dead 1 and Left 4 Dead 2 under my belt. It's been a while, but like, there's a big difference between having 250 hours of Left 4 Dead playing on like public servers and me. The vast majority of my hours were with a crew that did nothing but get home from work and play Left 4 Dead with some really like so legit you, you gamers. You sharpen that sword a lot, a lot more than just like randomly playing against pubs. Absolutely, yeah. And so the vast majority of my hours are playing with that with that crew. I have significantly less hours than everyone else that was on that team um, by like probably hundreds, <laughs> but uh, I've only really played with all of them. Yeah. So, <laughs> and you follow orders good. Yeah. And your FPS skills are. Yeah, that's that's nice. Every every once in a while, I was I usually did okay. Every once in a while, if I got like the right zombie characters, I'd like top damage or whatever. I really my favorite one's the spitter. Oh, spitter's so much fun. So much fun. So much fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like it's not like Linus is quiet. So anytime that I'm like not necessarily sure what I should be doing. 
I just like, hey, where am I going or like whatever, and I'll I'll get information quickly. But yeah, it was good. We ended up playing against, um, like essentially my my family and friends in the final. So that was weird because like their team name is generally the team name that I'm under, and we like had to beat them up, which was kind of funny. Had to crush them. It was it was there was a few funny moments where like I would just like take someone out. Or just like there was a boomer time where I got all four of them and I was just like <laughs> brutal. <laughs> there was one time I was a smoker. I was on top of the building. You guys hit them all at the same time. Yeah. And I 100 to KO'd someone with the smoker. Nice. And I was like, yeah, let's go. Um, Linus against, again, my crew did a charger run down a set of stairs and hit literally every single one of them which was awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty it was fun. It was good. Heart, I mean, as much as I love just crapping all over noobs, though, I'd say the most fun that I had at the LAN was Halo CE oh Blood goodness. Gulch. Whew. You can't, you you can't plan. We, have the clip. we can show the clip. I was looking for it okay. just now. Okay. You, I haven't found it yet, but you cannot plan this out, okay? You can't have ranked players go into a tournament and set up teams this even. And, and we basically just, Luke and I started up a lobby. Each of us went to one of the teams and then we just broadcast the password on Discord and people flooded in, randomly populated to the teams. We broke it into separate Discord chats. And I kid you not, I have never seen a competition so even in my life. We played 8v8 on Blood Gulch, Capture the Flag, three full rounds with neither team scoring a single flag capture and it, it got close to the end of the fourth one as well and then finally finally and it was like it was not because people didn't know what they were doing or weren't following instructions or weren't good fps players if anything it was just that each team had the perfect mix of elite tier players and lower end scrappers and there was just this per it was like playing warcraft one Right. Where where the orcs and the humans are exactly equivalent. Like you would have a, a swordsman and a, and a, what are they called? Grunts. They're, they're just like swordsman equivalent ish. And they would just go. Uh, 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 uh. And then the last two swords would hit each other at the Ooh. same time. and They would both yeah. die. Right. Like yeah. that. That would that would actually happen oh, in Warcraft, too, as well. Uh, so so it would that was just how every conflict would go down. Both teams would annihilate each other. And respawn over and over and over again until until finally, finally, the stalemate was broken by just a fluke, lucky it was situation. So sick to watch it back. If if anyone's in the Whale Land Discord, because it's still up, uh, if you can find the video and post it in general, because I, I can't really find it right now. Uh, I just don't remember what channel it's in. But if you can post it, it'd be really cool to show because it's actually crazy. Like it's. <laughs> It's pretty sweet. Oh man, I was raging out so hard. Luke, uh, Luke mentioned <clears throat> that I'm not a quiet gamer, <laughs> which is fair. I like it. I'm not complaining. It's just it's a fact. <laughs> so when my driver, the driver of my warthog, who I asked to take, <laughs> asked very politely and calmly, asked. <laughs> Luke was actually sitting next to me so he could hear me just like nah, 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 I, I, into my mic the whole time. I would try not to, I would try to mute my mic when I heard you actually saying commands. And if I heard like, okay, we're going in whatever amount of time, I would not relay that information. I would try not to act on it. But sometimes it was so loud that it would go through other people's mics in the convention and I would hear you saying it through my headphones from someone else. And I was just like, yeah. okay. <laughs> So I tend to be a bit of a loud boy gamer. We got it. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, do you want to? I'm gonna wanna send it to you on. Post it on... in the chat. Or oh yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. If you send it to me here, I can just play it. Um, okay. So someone's hiding behind the base. Okay. And they went. They stole one of the warthogs from that base. Happened to pull up right as some lone wolf rogue came out the back of the base with the flag grabbed them like it couldn't have been timed more perfectly if we were professional players uh where will i find i'm this? just trying to figure out where to send it to you oh the, the, dock. It in the dock okay, yeah okay, the okay. dock is good just right at the top it's perfect um 
So they're coming back and I'm like, guys, guys, you got to talk. You got to communicate, communicate. They're like, we got the flight. I'm like, okay, where? Where are you going? What can we do? What can we do to support you? And they're like, okay, we're coming back. I'm like, which side? Where are you coming back? I'm like, oh, so I'm talking to my driver. I'm like, go, go, go. You got to go, go up here. My driver, bless his heart. Bless his heart, soul, mind, and body. Okay. Drives headlong into the warthog that is coming back after literally an hour of stalemate an hour no one can score okay drives headlong into the warthog that is carrying their flag back this is an 8v8 we are right next to the portal that comes out of their base i just should be under the uh right above intel slowing down right above that topic <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm slowly. like I'm getting anxiety just thinking back to it. Okay, here it is. Fortunately, uh fortunately the the capper, I believe. Yeah. 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 The the capper managed to managed to uh, screen record and upload the whole thing. So this particular player on our team was kind of playing hide hide up near the base, kind of take pot shots or whatever. One of the things we were trying to do was accumulate oh, all the, the warthogs yeah. so that we could do a, like a four warthog push. Look at this. Didn't know they were coming because people yeah. don't communicate. I had no idea in CE you could get in the gunner seat with a flag. That also confused the crap out of me. A lot of yes. people were shooting at the passenger seat, so we were actually missing them. Nice. So this is my hog that drives headlong into the... <laughs> I didn't see it. Our hog crashed. So I didn't actually see that they landed on all four wheels. Nobody talks. So I didn't know what the heck was going on. We have someone in their base grabbing their flag who goes out the back, which you would think would be smart, but that's actually where they pulled up their flag. They like barely make it through, but they cap it. Crazy ending. Scored. Oh, so man. Cool. One nothing after four full rounds. It was absolutely wild. I mean, that's the kind of thing I love at Lens is the second that happened, the end you could just, just hear roar. oh yeah just all over the room like you can't ah oh, there's n playing online yeah it's fine i guess right you don't get the same uh but it's not the same response and stuff like there's nothing better than dueling someone finishing them off with a headshot and being like ah like <laughs> <laughs> the first round linus and i were like fighting over kills uh and then event one i thought it was me it was Oh, no, I won the second yeah, one. Yeah, not, not even okay, close to the first one. You weren't I, even close. I stopped going for kills because I started realizing no one is ever going to win the game. <laughs> yeah, and I followed suit because <laughs> their team got way more organized. Yeah, because it, it oh, was like the, the respawn timer. What I think the shortest respawn timer is like five seconds. And then you have eight people. And the flag return is instant. If you touch it, it's just gone. So actually getting one of the flags out is really hard. Um, but that's just, you know, I mean, one of the teams CE pulled things. it off. Just wow. saying, just saying, wow. I mean, one of the teams wow. had a commander who was able to, <laughs> <laughs> I did make some sus calls here. And then your, your four warthog push thing was never going to work by the way. Yeah, um, that's fair. we had, we had like beautiful strategies for that. Um, yeah. Sneaky boy warthog though. We also did Sneaky not boy with like the spring bounce. If that's one thing that I think might people not people might not know is there was like grenades and stuff under that hog if it stayed on the ground it was dead the fact that it got ran into and did a perfect flip in the air and landed with like still having momentum <laughs> like what was amazing um, yeah it it's actually such great. a cool clip i seriously doubt there's clips that have like the exact same series of events oh and it's an ancient game that people played a ton so that's super cool yeah it was it was awesome man yeah that was that was really sick Love land gaming. Although I think my favorite moment was when I hoodwinked literally everyone at the entire event. Including me. And I was sitting right next to it. In the minor VGA competition. Okay? Minor VGA. Pretty tough game. Pretty unforgiving game. All right? We gave people, what was it, 10 or 15 minutes? Yeah, it wasn't that much. To time. accumulate as much money in their bank account as possible. And at the end of it, I was like, yeah, there, there's no way that anyone's going to beat me at minor VGA. And we actually had someone who did shockingly well. Like, they had what, like 5,000? That was a lot. Like, a lot. Like, far and away more than anyone else. Did they win a gaming PC? 
I think so. Yes, they did. Yeah, they won an absolutely wild prize. But anyway, sick gaming PC too. (laughs) Before before I admitted that they that they won it, I um I went back to my machine. I was like, I'm gonna win this one, and I managed fifteen thousand dollars. $15,000. $15,000. That's nearly end game for minor VGA. I had like all the items. I had the four leaf clover. I had the wedding ring. I had the condom. Okay. I had everything. <laughs> that is a, that is an item. In that the is game. an item in the game. Okay. You got to get the condom. Okay. It's, play it safe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so I had the condom and uh, you know, everyone, Luke included. I was like, Luke, did I cheat? He looks over at my computer. He's like, well, not only that, I, I was playing next to him. Partway through, I'm like, man, this is really hard because I've never really played before because I knew it was coming, but I didn't like practice or anything. Um, and I was like losing money and I thought I was doing the right strategy, but I I, it, I wasn't. Linus told me how to play after that. Uh, but I <laughs> glance over and he has this amount of money and he's like basically given up. And I was like, what? You have whatever? The thing that convinced me about it was that you didn't seem to care. Which was really, that was very smart. Because you just kind of like shrugged it off. And you're like, yeah, no one's going to beat me. (laughs) And I was like, okay, all right, sounds good. (laughs) So I was convinced because I was sitting right next to him. Never saw him open the VM because I was focused on trying to learn the game. But So I had a game that I had already played for like two hours. Because I was ripping footage for the upcoming channel Super Fun where Colton and Dennis uh, attempt to hide in my house again. Um, and the way that the downloader works from the Ubiquity UI is that you it, it breaks up the files and you can only confirm the save location of the file once each one is done. Oh. And so I was just stuck sitting at my computer confirming downloads because there's like 200 files or something stupid like that for all the different cameras and all the time span that we that we had to record them for. So I was like, ah, oh, screw it. I'll I'll play minor VG in the other tab. So then what I did was I left my computer in a state where I would land on minor VGA in kind of a believable scenario. So I went down, sat at my computer, like started one, and then, eh, fresh, and then it was like team viewer, hide hide interface. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> And I even had Luke check my computer when I was like, yeah, I did way better. He's like, no, it's legit. It's legit. I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah, it's legit. It yeah, I didn't legit. notice there was there was the little like, because it was a full screen and stuff. There's just the little tiny drop down thing at the top. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think there was like a mic in the way or something. Someone yeah. on the other side of the table was like, no, it's there. And I had to lean around to be able to see it. It was awesome. Yeah. Oh, boy. I had so much fun with that. that was the cool. winner of Space Cadet Table played on a Steam Deck. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. That was hilarious. There, w- there was the Counter Strike tournament, which I enjoyed because usually at most lands that I've been to, that there is a Counter Strike tournament, some like local team will show up, and it's just like not even remotely close. But all the like like quarter semi and actual final every single one of them was down to the wire that's which awesome. was really cool and like that's, that's super cool that, that was that was actually sweet it like actually felt like a real tournament despite being kind of the opposite because <laughs> it was mostly just a bunch of randoms but it wasn't like just a complete slaughter by like one pro team or something like that's that. that's so important for fun i would rather have lost that halo match than won it easily yeah like just a close game is so much better than a blowout, no matter which side you're on. Yeah, the the multi like flash game style tournament thing was really cool. I'm very happy that it culminated with Nidhog because Nidhog is such a cool like one v one like oh yeah stressor type of game. Oh yeah. So having it end with Nidhog was awesome. The fact that I got Robot Unicorn Attack in there was cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we had good. some good Space Cadet table players there. Yep. I thought I was pretty good. I played a lot when I was a kid, but I was not even close. In fairness to me, though, you saw how laggy it was running on my machine. Mine was too. I don't know what was up it with was that. It was pretty brutal. I could barely even shoot a new ball. Like yeah. it was, it was totally, totally glitched out. But yeah, yeah, land was really good. All right, why don't we uh, jump into another topic? Uh, what else did we say we would talk about? When did we start the show? I don't know. 
Oh, how long have we been streaming? That's what I was wondering. It's eight. It's about two and a half hours. Oh, we should probably call it at some point. Jeez, we have we've hardly even touched the merch messages. Um, there's just been a lot. I don't know if the rest of the topics are like all okay. that well, interesting. Well, I definitely want to talk about how there are now two Google Meets. Okay, yeah. I heard about this and my eyes rolled into the back of my head and I moved on because I didn't even <laughs> want to know what was happening. So, yeah, what what is it? Um, Google now has two two Google Meets. It's not enough for them to have competing video chat products internally. Now, they actually have the same name even though they're different programs. In fairness, in fairness, Microsoft, I think, was the first to this innovation with their multiple versions of Skype and now multiple wasn't, versions of Teams. Wasn't, okay, hold on. Wasn't it Skype for business? Uh, and then Skype? Yeah, but still. That's clear enough. No, just log in with a business login freaking account and have business f***ing features, you idiots. No. <laughs> I no, think, you don't have I Skype think, for business and Skype. I think there's different ways that it's like actually built. Well, uh, then pick the one that's good <laughs> and use everyone. that one. Yeah, it's probably more expensive. I mean, them. it's like, well, back when they used to have two separate freaking kernels for their operating system. The good one for business and the crap one for home. <laughs> so to get, get rid of the crap that one. Uh, that one's less defensive. Obviously. Obviously. Who's Skype? in charge? Skype for Business was Link. Yeah. And I, in my opinion, that was a better name, to be honest. Sorry. I get kind of angry about this kind of crap. So tell me about the two Meets. All right. Um, Google Meet was originally launched as a Zoom-like video communication successor to Hangouts, which hilariously still exists. The fact that all the video, like, video-to-video -video communication companies allowed Zoom to, like, become <laughs> what it is, is pathetic i'm sorry yeah but it is from january to april 2020 meets user count grew by a factor of 30 with roughly 100 million users per day google duo was launched earlier as a one-to-one -one and group call app meant for a for, for smaller scale use think facetime skype or discord if it's scalable then use it if it's not scalable then put it on the shelf goodbye why do you need a good scalable one and a crap not scalable? Sorry, sorry. Okay. As the pandemic went on, the need for both styles of communication grew, and so did the apps. As a result, Duo, as the smaller service, has been rebranded Meet and will receive the features from both apps, and Meet is still Meet. So we have two Meets. Um, so what? Meet... So it's not even like a business? They're both business or consumer. So Meet is compatible with both Duo and Meet, but Meet is compatible only with Meet. Eventually, the old Meet app will be phased out in favor of the Duo app with Meet functionality, which is now being called Meet. Ah, this is horrible. How did this stuff happen? Users of Duo don't have to do anything the app was updated automatically with Meet support last month and had its icon changed earlier this week. And want, I'm assuming its name. Want to see something that makes me really angry? As someone who used Hangouts as our internal business chat as part of G Suite for so long, then switched off of it first to Slack, which we had issues with. Was it Slack? I wasn't a part of that. I think, I think so. it was Slack. First though. to Slack, then to Teams, both of which we've had numerous, numerous issues with Hangouts for all its warts and all its simplicity did did mostly just work um, and was convenient because it was always open in your <laughs> Gmail tab. No way. Always. Okay, so every time I see this, I get irrationally angry because they told me Hangouts is going away, so we like rush migrated off of it. Now, when you go to share something in Android and you click Gmail, it freaking prompts you. Gmail or chat? No, no, no. Gmail. You told me chat, which is what Hangouts is now, and the one that's built into email. You told me it was going away. I believed you. That's what I get for believing anything you say. When I click Gmail, I mean a f email. That's what I mean. Don't make me press more Don't buttons. Don't make me press more buttons. And the hilarious thing is that Oh, okay. It doesn't. It doesn't right now. So I'm not sure why. But there used to be 
a chat. Oh, this is chat. Was this different chat? No, no, that's because that's there's a standalone chat app aside from chat built into the Gmail app. How are they so bad at this? So Bell said that the the Meet app on his phone is now named Meet and then Original in brackets. <laughs> Yeah, just updated one day on my iPhone. I was like, what is this long name? That is it's Meet so Original. Funny. Yeah, mine is that too. What the heck? Wow. Crazy. All right. Let's talk merch messages. I got a I got a lab to pay for. Read me merch messages. Wow. From Calvin. Hi. I've been following your coverage on the use of HDR video very closely. Any updates on LTD HDR in the future? We did one. We did one recently. The uh, the video on glossy monitors on the Eve, excuse me, Doe Spectrum uh, is in HDR. So if you watch it on an HDR compatible display with HDR enabled, you will experience it in HDR. And for videos about displays in particular, it, it, it is a huge difference maker. It really helps you to better see through the screen the differences between two, two different experiences. It's more true to life. <laughs> from Milutin. Oh, hold on. I, I saw a little bit more to that merch message. And yes, we've learned a lot. Um, we are working closely with Adobe and with YouTube. There seems to, I don't know if I can take credit for it, but there seems to be a fire lit in the online video streaming industry um, to, to better support HDR. And I'm really excited for it. We, we, are, we are moving slowly but surely toward HDR, particularly on LTT. There have been two to three videos. Someone in Floatplane chat said there have been two to three HDR videos on Floatplane. There has been, um, but I will admit they're quite the pain to get going. Um, and we do need to update our stiffs so that it can be done better. Fortunately, but, the king has returned. Yeah. Well, that we're not. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Float plane people will know. Sure has. <laughs> I had a wonderful day. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Actually, my day was pretty chaotic, but that was a good, that was a high point. It was a good moment. Yeah. Uh, from Milutin. Hi, Luke and Linus, longtime fan. I wanted to ask what you think of smartwatches. Are they a fad that have run their course? Will they become a ubiquitous gadget on everyone's wrist or remain a niche product like I feel they are now? I really want them to be good, but I give up. So I'm just using uh, the Withings, you know, one that is a clock and lasts for a month. And I guess there's like some heart recording stuff, but I don't really care about any of that. I have always done really, really bad with any accessories that you wear. Uh, if they're glasses, I will lose them or drop them or step on them. Um, is that why you don't wear glasses? Yeah. Oh. That's sort of sad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I, I have a pair of glasses. Don't you have a close uh, a close associate who literally works in the glasses industry? And that's why I have two. I have sunglasses and I have those. Mm -hmm. The sunglasses... But you don't wear them. Never leave my car, ideally, because if they do, they will be gone. Because <laughs> you know you know how... I, like, if I leave your house, what percentage chance would you say that I have to come back to get my keys? Oh, yeah. 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 Just there's no number. It's just, yeah. 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 Okay. So like I, that type of stuff, if it's a ring, if it's a watch, if it's glasses, if it's a necklace, it's gone. And I just like know that about myself. So I don't wear any of it. Cool. Um, and that's it. So like, I, I think they're cool. They just, I, it's not for me. I would go with something like that where it's relatively simple and toned down. Cause I honestly wouldn't want to like daily charge a, a watch. That would just be very annoying to me. Yeah, it's all about battery life. I wear the Fossil Hybrid HR for the same reason. I get steps and basic stuff for yeah. two weeks, and that's better than charging an Apple Watch every day. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, from Sal, question for Luke. You mentioned you did freelance IT work before fully committing to LTT. What did you do to find work to make it possible? Um, This isn't entirely above board, but I haven't worked there in forever. So whatever. Uh, back when I used to work for Geek Squad, there was customers that would come in that would want things that are services that Geek Squad could not provide. Um, so in those cases, I would potentially step in. Um, that is how I got one of my clients. 
Um, that was pretty One bad. of my main ones. It was stuff that they literally didn't do. Yeah. You're just like not really supposed to do that. No, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yep. I was very I mean, you young with that. and extremely poor. So that's I did. Yep. I did what I did. I mean, at least you didn't steal toilet paper. <laughs> for like a long time. Um but yeah, like I, there, there was, there was one guy who needed server work done, like on location. Like this is not something that sure. Geekswad would ever oh, do. Oh, they'd never touch that. No, like I, I only did stuff where it would never be something that they would do. Um, and then that got me some other jobs because he was business person who sure. talked to other business people that had the same problem. And then blah 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 blah, and it just kind of growed from there. Grew it, from it there. Growed. Um, <laughs> Um, getting late some yeah something that you can do though is just like go talk to businesses fine i've talked a few times about how like notaries and law offices and and uh medical practices and stuff like that they yeah, need dentists. very good uh data storage and security yep it needs to be extremely reliable etc be good so that you're not screwing them over because there is liability um but yeah then just go walk into places and be like what is your solution like? Do you need a better one? Et cetera, et cetera. This is great. And then he graduated to grossly mi- misrepresenting his qualifications on his LTT application. Love it. <laughs> All right, what's next? Uh, next one we have here <laughs> is from uh, Radioactive Twinkie. Hello, as PC enthusiasts and gamers, do either of you do routine wrist exercises to keep your wrist limber and to re- reduce the risk of carpal tunnel? Um, I play badminton, which involves a lot of, uh, squeezing and like, like these motions, these motions, squeezing motions. So I probably unintentionally do a ton of wrist exercise, but no, I don't go out of my way to, to do it. Uh, when I was rehabbing a problem that I was having with my arm, I spent a lot of time with the power ball, um, like a gyro gyro ball. And that worked really great for me. But other than that, no, I can't say that I do. Uh, nope. Never been even remotely a problem with me, though. Um... If I use a mouse that does is not compatible with my grip, um, I'll get, like, like ice, like, shooting really? feelings through my wrist. Um, but it hasn't been a problem with the Corsair M40 or 45 or whatever that one that I used for so long was. And it hasn't been a problem with the G Pro Wireless. So I'm pretty happy with where i'm at for that right now yeah i don't know i've I've never had anything like that my wrists are kind of huge i don't know if that like helps at all but yeah question here from alex a few years ago i managed to make my hard drive burst into flames despite having built multi multiple computers at that point i'd never heard or assumed that psu sata cables were not cross compatible Uh, do you have any other explosive stories i'd say my best story just like Lighting something on fire was probably, oh, I mean, I had one recently, actually. Okay, I got a couple. Never mind. I I tried to install a PCI card. Oh, man, no. I Oh, man, I don't remember anymore exactly what I tried to do. I wrote this out on the forum, like back in the early, like probably nine years ago on the forum. So I might tell the story wrong, but in a nutshell, I tried to install a PCI card into a... Uh, oh, no, I remember. Okay, I there was a, a PCI card that had some kind of a four-pin header on it. And probably it was for something to like some kind of breakout cable or something like that. I mistook it for a four-pin floppy female connector for like auxiliary power for the card. <laughs> so I plugged it in, powered on the system, and promptly released the magic smoke that was inside that card that made it work. Um, I had so, a buddy who, sorry, I thought you were done. No, no, go ahead. I had a buddy who was uh, fairly aggressively overclocking a computer and shot some blue flames out of the back of the power supply. I like it. But I have never, I think, been in that scenario. I, I managed think. to scorch the back of a motherboard just uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Nice. Yeah, I uh, was helping the neighbor build their PC and uh, young young neighbor and um, one, one of my son's friends. And I wasn't paying close enough attention. This is at least partially on me. And he was trying to put it into the back of the IO shield spot and dragging it around on the standoffs. 
knocked a couple caps off the back. Ooh. So I made a clumsy attempt at putting them back on, knowing that it was probably dead anyway. And whether it was the scratches to the traces around it or whether it was something else, you know, uh, when you hear that sound, yeah. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. So it in. That was that was pretty recent. Yeah, I, I haven't killed anything with like fire, you know, but I've I've bricked some stuff, but I guess it doesn't fit in this story. Hit me. From me sale. Excited to get my backpack. Hope have you guys thought about making wallets? I'm a simple man. I like to put my stuff in my wallet. I feel like I just don't really I don't demand much of a wallet. No. I use this I use this homemade one from Yvonne and I, I'm sure there are wallet connoisseurs out there who would who would ask for so much more performance from their wallet than I do. But for me it's just what are like the speeds and feeds. Yeah, can I can I reach the card? Can I can I flash my identification? I've had the All same right, wallet ever since we went to Germany for um the the cherry tour oh wow that's a long time i i bought a wallet while i was there because mine like literally fell apart i'm exactly the same, same. One. i've only ever owned three wallets in my entire life i, I have probably similar to me <laughs> used all of them until they disintegrated yeah. <laughs> and then i have gotten a new one that is as simple and usually a gift actually I, yeah, I think two of them were gifts. So I've gotten whatever simple, basic black men's leather wallet has been handed to me. Nice. Yeah. Yep. That's how I roll. From Sergeant Kilgore. Great name. Uh, yeah. Do you guys think modular phones will ever make a comeback? Also, do you have any opinions on VTubers? Man, I had a VTuber conversation with the whales at the Whale Land when I was doing the studio tour where I was basically saying, you know, I'm I'm getting too old for this. I'm getting too old to be the the front man hey. of this band. And um they kind of laughed, right? And I was like, "No, like for real. I'm going to be 40 like in a few years. I'm I'm going to be not young and cool at all. I mean, I was never cool, but I won't be young either." And you know, I think the next generation of tech enthusiasts are going to want a face that looks more like theirs to tell them about their, you know, their their tech purchases or whatever else. Like we have to, I, I have to realize that there's a shelf life. How many YouTubers can you name who are over 50? Yeah, not many. They definitely exist, but not many. Part okay. of that's because the the platform's age itself. I sure, think, right. But then I, that's where I was going next. How many, how many prominent things. TikTokers are over 40? Yeah. Right. So there's going to be new platforms. There's going to be new ways that the younger generation prefers to communicate. And I am not necessarily going to understand it. I'm not necessarily going to be there. So uh, one of the one of the solutions to aging out of your of your media platform is uh, going digital. Right. And I think a really good example of this is Ryan's Toy Reviews. Ryan's Toy Reviews started as a cute little kid unboxing toys. Right. But obviously, uh, his parents, who seemed to manage that particular media empire, recognized very early on that their son wasn't going to be five forever, right? And so they built up a team of animators and writers, and they built out content around Ryan's persona, around Ryan as a character, right? Um, and part of that is just making sure that he wasn't being exploited, right? That he wasn't working 60 hours a week making, making YouTube videos. Uh, but part of it is the longevity. And so... Um, Red and Link. It's yeah, it's a viable strategy, and I, you know, I could just pursue cosmetic surgery, right? You know, try and look young for as long as possible, try and stay limber. But that's going to run out at some point. I've got a lot of people relying on me, so it's definitely something that I've considered. Like, would you watch an animated review of something? I don't see why not. I I think, and I've kind of always thought this that, I, and and I know, I know, I know, but I think you put too much stock into it. I think uh, if it was a piece of technology that was like totally out of your realm sure but i don't think you lose legitimacy with like phones vr tech and computers just because you get old sure that is something from our generation yes but there will be things that are not from our generation like i don't have a ton of interest in things like smart speakers because i just grew up without them and i don't care about them and so i i think that whether it's whether it's just the face 
like I okay, so I won't look like someone who knows about whatever that new thing is. And people do they do generalize, they do stereotype, right? So I just I think it's something to be aware of. We've had people in chat bring up Adam Savage. Adam Savage is a great example of of someone who has transcended, you know, generational gaps, right? I, I think Adam Savage is cool pretty much across the board. But maybe that's the millennial in me talking. Maybe Adam Savage isn't cool to young people. I I, I wouldn't know because I think he's cool. So yeah, I don't know. Bixby says, I see old man tech wizard is more legitimate. Sure, but how many of them do you actually watch every day? I just don't think there are that many. Sure there are. I mean, you could watch uh, You could watch Get Connected. Uh, does he even still make YouTube yep. videos? You could watch Rodney Reynolds. I feel like I can hear Hi, I'm Rodney Reynolds in my brain. Does Leo Laporte still make <laughs> content? I believe so. Get connected. I, yeah, I can't find. Oh, here. Uh, Leo Laporte podcast. It's like, yeah, I think so. Eight days ago. Well, you guys got to make more content. There you go. Yeah. See, look, Pixel Buds Pro. You can hear about Pixel Buds Pro from uh, from Mike, right? Like, it's it's one of well, those. Well, no, I think it's... this is someone else now. What? Oh, hold on. We got a Mister. Mr. That's Beast a ad that's a face that we recognize. Yeah. Okay, so they've hired a host. Yeah. Uh, I, I, he's definitely still hosts some of it. I know that. Okay. I, I looked at it not that long ago. So, you know, I, it's, it's tough. It's something that I think about a fair bit. Um, Floatplane says I should get the Tom Cruise package. Yeah. I, I, I was watching Top Gun with, uh, with Yvonne. Um, I remember it being a lot cooler when I was a kid. <laughs> the original Top Gun? Yeah, it's like pretty hard to watch actually. Anyway. And I was looking at the other people in that movie, whether it's Val Kilmer or whether it's, um, is it? Hold on a second. No, no, Robin Wright played the princess and the princess bride, which I had no idea because when I was a kid, I didn't care about like who the cast was or whatever. So I, was, I saw that in like my plex. No way, that was Robin Wright anyway. Um, I don't know who that is. Uh, really? Yeah, no, she yeah. plays Jenny in Forrest Gump. She plays the, the the wife in House of Cards. Okay. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, Meg Ryan's in Top Gun, and so you look at like you look at everyone else in Top Gun. Literally, okay, literally thirty five years later, right? None of them have aged anywhere close to as well as Tom Cruise. So yeah, wh whoever's doing his work, man. Got to get me some of that so for realsies. It's Zenu, dude. For realsies. He's making it happen. Keeping him young. All right. What else we got? Uh, from Mark, with the steady progression of human enhancement tech, what would be your line for what is too much to replace? Would you get an RFID implant or digital eyeball or something else? Oh, I'm down. As long as it's like probably pretty safe and or I have like nothing to lose. Like if I if I lost my hearing, I'd be like first in line for a cochlear implant. Like, let's go. If you guys start getting into biohacking, I'm in, dude. Yeah. I'm in. Next question here for Luke from Alex. How do you and your engineers approach planning and road mapping? And how do you guys organize? Do you leverage Scrum? Scrum. So the whole thing of like agile and scrum is is almost I been paying attention to a lot of spaces a lot of people are kind of moving away from it it was it was very much the rage when we first started and we've kind of landed on a bit of a weird mix which seems to be true for a lot of teams um i don't know for everybody and i'm sure people can be like well my team does what i know i'm not talking for everybody um but our mix is that we do uh twice a week meetings so we do a meeting at the end of the week and we do a meeting near the end of the week uh, Monday and Thursday, generally, those meetings are supposed to be fast. Um, they're not supposed to take a lot of time. We've had those meetings that last less than five minutes, um, in total, not per person. They are, they're supposed to be quick. They're not supposed to take a lot of your day. Um, and that's like the, the stand up from the scrum mentality stuff that we do. Uh, but then we dive into Kanban with, uh, like issue tracking and, and task tracking boards, um, that people manage themselves and yada, 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 uh, planning and road mapping, um, planning 
as much as I can try, uh, often just has bombs dropped on it all the time. And if people are in this space, I think they probably have experienced the same thing. Whether that's Linus just randomly coming in and be like, hey guys, we're doing all these things now. Good luck. I needed a month. Um, or if I don't usually give you a month. Uh, yeah, usually it's less than that. Um, or if it's me doing effectively the same thing, to be completely honest, um, because I'll I'll be like, oh wait, this like creator wants this thing, uh, so you're halfway through that. That's cool. What if you worked on this thing now? Uh <laughs> Especially with a small team, sometimes there can be staffing challenges, and it's beyond our control. Like, yeah, they were going to do that, but they didn't. So here we go. You know, yeah. and it's not anyone's fault. It just does still need to be. The show must go on Devel- at the end of the day. Development is. Uh, inconsistent progress that that is going to be a thing that you experience is inconsistent progress you'll have someone who will make absolute leaps and bounds in like two days and then they get stuck on something that like actually wasn't that difficult for like two weeks because they just happened to not approach it in the exact right way or see it from the exact right angle and they spend a bunch of time trying like more difficult solutions than what it actually needed. And then they figure out that it's something simple, whatever. And that's going to happen. And that's fine. That just happens in this space a lot. Um, This is hilarious. Sorry. I'm just going to jump in. This is from Twitch chat. Nido says, it's easy to say we need to plan better and end up in an infinite loop of meetings discussing how to plan and never end up doing anything. Yeah. And a lot of times you just need to act. So in in regards to architecting too, like, I don't know, we we do our best. Uh, We we try to figure out all the different components that are going to end up going into something. But a lot of times, Linus or me or someone else on the team, it doesn't matter, is going to change what we need to do because we'll learn something or we'll experience something right we'll go oh this tool that's currently in development actually needs to work this way or we'll get user feedback or that so like sometimes things are going to change so we architect the best that we can to try to set ourselves up for the best possible result but i never i I think it's a a fool's path to go into it assuming that uh it's not going to change sometimes potentially drastically hopefully that answered your question this is i could talk about this for a long time so that's that's the compressed version but yeah nice the last question we have here is from anon as a frequent phone switchers for smart smartphone reviews how do you manage the transition of data apps messages and contacts between your temporary daily drivers i haven't found a reliable method. oh it sucks that was one of the main reasons that i dailyed the note 9 for so long was that i just got tired of switching my daily driver actual daily driver phone all the time so what i would do is i would mostly sloppy transition over to whatever i was reviewing and i would just have my note 9 in my pocket for certain things like i just didn't want to move my authy onto the one that i was reviewing or i didn't want to move my uh wechat was one that was really annoying like i lost my entire wechat history a couple of times because the process for backing it up and restoring it is like kind of arcane um so yeah I, i'm sorry i don't really have like a perfect solution for you it sucks and it will always suck as far as i can tell it is what it is and it is over thank you for tuning into the wan show yeah we'll see you again next week same bad time same bad channel bye sorry guys i didn't know you're on this so I didn't even, I wasn't even like thinking of this part way through the show, I checked the timer. Oh. Yeah, yeah.